rely on. I do too, and and I think they they absolutely should. I think this would be a disaster for Furia if they actually don't manage to to make it out of this stage and into the next one, especially against a heroic that uh, Dexter just came in, just played his first series with them on land. It hasn't looked great from heroic yesterday, even in a victory. Let's see what they've got today. They've got an A play. That's what's coming in here for heroic. Simple direct call into the A bomb site, and there's only one player actually having a look over here, and that's Yuri. He's up on top of those stairs, and the smokes will trickle on in. You'll see that fly overhead. He'll call for his teammates to come on over to try and help him out. Yeah, he's going to be pinned back in towards Khan. There's the flashbang around the corner. Skulls is being held back by Nurts at a deep angle from Palace. No kills quite yet. Bomb being planted. We're going to have a five-on-five -five retake. There's no smoke. There's no kit for Furia. They're going to have to find all those kills, and they're going to have to do it fast. And just taking their time at the moment. Fallen's worried about getting through that murder hole. Yuri chimes in. First blood drawn in this pistol round, and it's from the Brazilians. Yuri follows up with a second. Keserado right below him. Kicks in, and Keserado's going to check that. He's going to see him. And this is Heroic falling apart in the post plan. Every single player oh. goes down for Heroic, and Furia don't lose a single member. <laughs> yeah, that felt uh, easier than I expected when I saw that bomb go down in the 5v5. Great yeah. Molotov. That molly helped out massively, because obviously Heroic, with that kind of deep smoke towards Khan, they can get control of jungle. Very hard place to clear out, especially if the retakes coming through CT spawn, but Furia have the Molotov to make sure Heroic can't put a stop to their plans. Now, it was a while ago we, we were on the veto talk before it delved into madness, so we, we do, uh, we'll bring that up again in this the fact that, you know, we see Mirage up first, but Furia picked Anubis. Uh, they won Anubis over Liquid in that previous series, 13 to 8, and that was Liquid's map pick. So do you think it's the case of because they gained so much confidence off of that match, they're willing to take it as a pick and then float Nuke as possibly hoping that they get it as a third? Yeah, I think I think Blood kind of mentioned too, like it could be a little bit of a punish pick in terms of Heroic mm -hmm. not exactly looking great on it, even with Dexter in the lineup That's yesterday, yeah. really kind of struggled uh, against 3D Max on it. So um, there's some of that, but look, I... I generally enjoy the idea as, as a general philosophy. I like teams in map vetoes that target their opponent's weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But to do that, you have to be very confident in your own map pool. And the question is, is Furia confident in their own map pool? Sure, should they be confident? Because they obviously yeah. are to do this. But that was the question of them coming out of EWC. Was like, yeah, we saw. Do good they have things, anything other than nukes? But you played five nukes, yeah, so it's true. you know it becomes the, the map pool is those one thing from Fury we haven't had to see them prove uh, to us. And they lost nuke to, to Liquid back in that previous series. They lost thirteen to eleven. They also lost Mirage, which is where we find ourselves right now. They lost that convincingly thirteen seven. So I'm hoping that they've uh, maybe seen something in that game they can fix coming up against Heroic. But it does feel like Hero need to win Mirage if they have a shot at winning this series. Oh, for sure. Gonna need some big games out of Nerds as well. Yeah, Gonna Dexter need... and Nerds, that, that's a scary combo. If that can start to work, yeah, Heroic you get, have so much firepower. You get little. one impactful Opera, you get a super impactful Rifler. Then you're cooking with gas, baby. Let's see if it can come alive here in this first map. Gonna be a Palace Pop, three players. Cello close by with the MP9. And Fury has taken the advantage to close and shrink this map. A little bit of aggression in B-Halls. However, with two players, that's a long rotation. No information, no sound cues anywhere on the map until just now. Star smoke. Cool jungle smoke. Waterfall effect, blocking out any vision from stairs or connector. And Cello from Firebox delivers the first blow. Second is comfortable. Cello now hiding behind. He actually swings out to his death. But he's done the initial damage to slow down this heroic play, and Fallen's coming in on that flank through T spawn. So really shouldn't even get close to a bomb plant here. Heroic, the rest of Furia are ready to go, and Dexter's now spotted towards Palace. Soon Fallen will come out of ramp, and Dexter has nowhere really to go here. Nope, gonna back away. Fallen's even tracking all these footsteps as well. Very, very fast timing for this flank. Dexter likely will not expect it. Does swing and clear left. Ooh. Off angle shot missed by Fallen. I, look, at this point, it's cost, right? It's taken some guns away. And I think Furia realized they've already hit two. They've kind of hit their limit of what they want to risk in this round. These are the M4s, not MP9. So just back away. Let him keep the Galil. He's not going to get any bonus money if he wants to save. Can't make it to B either. Nope, you, you just, just hang out. So two to nothing for Furia. And Dexter will have the only rifle for Heroic surrounded by Glocks. Yeah, at this point, 
It's going to be a comfortable start for the side of Furia. The investment for Heroic doesn't quite pan out the way they would have hoped. No, and it's it's kind of a bummer, actually, that Dexter, especially as the opera, is the one to stay alive and not get any bonus money moving True. forward, right? Like, this Galil with armor surrounded by Glocks with a little bit of utility is, is really kind of nothing. So there's some upgraded pistols. Maybe one of those deagles can give you an opportunity, but not enough strength here for Heroic. And a missed window smoke. Colin just spamming through, trying to connect it, but he coming out through top. All of mid. Now it's will creep into the underpass. Molly coming in to heat things up down there for Heroic, so they can't force the issue. They try and split through top, mid, and lower. Uh, it looks like this setup, especially with that information picked up, Fury should be able to deal with any of these threats. They're coming down here. Nurse is on 14 health, so softened up, and now Skulls is going to move into that position. Best they can hope for is maybe getting someone under the window. It doesn't look like this is going to end up being anything. Yeah, even if you do get someone in the window, you need you need a deagle to provide you like one of those headshots to create the opening needed to make the follow-up mm -hmm. play after getting sure. into window. And that Galil still hasn't found any any way to get involved in the action. And it's now the only one left. He does find Yuri. Rifle hitting the deck for Furia, but <laughs> all players are here. It's deja vu from last round. This time, even more convincing from Furious. Strong start through to zero. Finally, Heroic will get money for the first time here on Mirage. AKs, Galils, they're all out on show. That's the thing. Dexter, he, he, with, with that saving of uh, after the time, doesn't get a whole lot of bonus money, so he's got to go down to the Galil and just one smoke. Yeah, I and mean, you don't want your Alper to be so far behind on cash either. No, it's not great. It's not fun. Fallen's got an AWP, speaking of which, on the other side of the map. Yeah, excited to see Fallen's Alping here. This is going to be a fun head-to-head. -head. Skull's hopping out of the window. He's charging up top, and he's blinded. It's awkward here for Skulls, where the flash comes in at the perfect time to blind Kicksand. So that's Skulls taking him down, and a 5v4 established for Furia. Look at Fallen's deep angle here. Yeah, and he's actually setting Cello up oh. for a push. And, oh, and Cello wasn't spotted, though. Nerds no, he thinks wasn't. this is clear. Smoke out in hand. Nerds walks right into Cello. So the trade is given up for free. That keeps Furia ahead. And it keeps Furia with a great piece of information on the map. They know B-Halls is entirely clear at the moment. So double up on Catwalk because you know that pressure is not going to come in. You've got a player in window as well. Skulls at the top of Khan. All four players of Furia are ready to react in unison to crunch middle. Uh, Skulls in Khan. He loses that fight against Tessas who just rips him apart. So wide open yet again. A minute left. Down inside a connector is Tessas. Dexter's now stuck behind his smoke grenade. He's going to get spammed down by Cello who is so aware of that possibility. It is suddenly Shush in a 1v3 and Heroic have com been completely silenced here. Yeah, again, by Furia. Now, all he can do is try and grab the bomb really quick inside the smoke. Hope he doesn't show on the other side. He hasn't got it. No, yet. he's got it now. There it is. He's grabbed the bomb, but and the smoke fades. clears at the worst <laughs> possible time. And Furia off to a spotless start, four to nothing. <laughs> this is tough now for Heroic, who you have to get around to the board. Where do they go with the kind of buy here? They, they don't have a whole lot of money left over, but they could upgrade into some Tech Nines and obviously Galil available for Nerds. That's the, the buy they've gone for. So they'll give themselves a shot in the dark in this one, but saving mainly for the next. Most likely the outcome is a 5 0 start for Fury up. What are your expectations for Fury in the event, though? Because I would say we would all want to see them get out of stage one, obviously, but. When we're getting into stage two, what, what do you think of that? Like, this is, if they get through Heroic today. If they get through Heroic today, I don't know. My ex I, I expect them to be a team that plays some close games, but probably isn't, uh, probably isn't challenging. I don't know. It's like my expectations of what I think they should be at and want them to be at is challenging for a playoff spot down the stretch. Do yeah. I actually think that's going to occur? No, I think they'll kind of fall short of, of, of that final day of actually fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah. Skulls goes patient, waiting for a flashbang okay. from a teammate, which gives Shush the chance to turn the corner. And now it gets real dicey. Yeah, a couple of kills there. This is... There's a, this, there's a great chance for Fury to come back in this round, though, because the bomb was outside B. That was going to be a little bit of a fake the whole time. They didn't expect to have this success, so it's going to take a little bit oh, of time for the kill. bomb to rotate back, which gives time for Caserato to even things out in a two-on-two. -two. Yeah, that changes so much with that. Kill inside of the A side. No longer does Dexter feel comfortable. He had to go back, get that ball, make his way back over to the A side of things. And he's only got a deagle in his hands. 
Now, Tessas and Daystar are given the space to play with. They're giving that respect towards A because Keserado is just watching the mirror hole, waiting for a peek into jungle. AWP now in the hands of Dexter. That really changes the game here in this 2v2. Yeah, absolutely does. That's massive, especially when you consider Furia still very far away from this bomb site. They were keeping the rest of the map honest. So time for this op to get posted up and a lot of long, clear routes for the op to take shots. Yeah, this is going to be really tough for Fury. They've got a smoke that will flash or cello. At least they can deploy that utility if he can get close to the bomb site. But he has to still get through connector. And Tessus is in there and time is ticking. Tessus isn't expecting this. Oh, he's, he's expecting both away. to be coming from CT. And now you can put those smokes to good use. The two flashbangs as well. Yeah, instantly onto the side. And this is not the weapon to spam down through the smokes. It was one bullet in. It goes to the Deagle. It's a good shot, but it's not enough damage. And cello comes in to close. It is five in a row for Furia. Heroic play it close. They get a bomb plant, and that means their money has swollen because they have a lot of loss bonus and the extra cash flowing in. Wake-up call for Furia. Got to be really careful. That round almost goes sour on them. Good job from Cello. Just so patient the whole round. Tessus thought he had shifted back through CT spawn. And then beautiful cover, aggressively swinging as his teammate gets on the defuse after that op shot. Dexter even lands a deagle bullet. Brings K Serato. Oh. That would be pretty scary to play against Cello. Oh. That'd be pretty I was during the liquid game, I was uh That's that's what we've got today. Yeah, that's that's the energy he's bringing. I was standing above him yeah, uh, during the liquid game the other day, just above the, the cello uh, PC area, and I was just looking down on him, and he had this 1v1 against Yukindar, I believe it was, and he just won it and just looked at him and just screamed, and I just seen Yukindar look up. Kind of kind of scared, actually. I was looking at him like, you know. You're overthinking uh, that. Yukindar can't see past yeah, his monitor. Yeah, he's just like a... <laughs> that's true. There's that's no true. way he saw cello doing he, anything. His, fo his focus he's, doesn't work anymore at that he, kind of range. He's, he's touching his monitor yeah. with his nose, so there's no way. Maybe he can't just, even see the kill feed. That was the story I was trying to tell myself. <laughs> uh, anyway, Cello was screaming at him regardless. <laughs> we love that out of Cello. Get hyped, baby. And it does bring a brilliant energy to this Furious squad in terms of that competitive spirit. I, th I think this team at points throughout some of the iterations of the roster, they kind of lack that classic Brazilian fire that we see from, from other squads. Definitely don't like that now. With, a, lot, with cello coming in. a lot of that has subsided from the teams that play frequently on tier one. When you realize, like at this level, the swings are so hard to keep up with that kind of that kind of emotion Adrenaline constantly. Drops, yeah, because yeah. you could do that and then lose the next round, and your money is reset. And you just got to deal with the fact that you've just wasted a whole load of energy. Heroic haven't really taken or done anything on the map. We're cross, we're past the one minute mark now. Throwing out some late utility to show mid presence. It's just going to be a Tessa's lurk behind it, though. Rest of the hit coming into the A bomb site. Skulls will be tested. Yuri and Caserato will be tested. That's a scary trio to go up against. Yeah, that is a real trifecta of death, isn't it? Well, one of them's gone. It's down to two. That's a big mistake from Yuri. It might cost him. Oh, Keserato off the top of the stairway, and suddenly it is all on Skulls, who has to multi-kill, and Skulls does exactly that! He had three teammates, they done nothing, so he stepped up in their stead. Three kills back, it is now a 2v2 with 15 seconds left. Heroic planting that bomb finally. It is Cello and Fallen once again on a 2v2 retake. They did this previously, but this time they're up against better weapons. Well, the Omp's gonna wrap around through CT spawn. It's Cello who's gotta find his way over. Got two mollies left over for the post plant here for Heroic. Oh, and there's no smokes. If oh, they get the one of those mollies out onto the bomb at any point, it, it might just be over. However, they're both tucked down on ramp, so they don't necessarily have a great angle, especially against an AWP if they want to swing wide, but Furious really taking their time with yeah, this. Yeah, they're taking the time with a lack of utility, and that really doesn't bode well for them. Yeah, yeah, they're going to call it. They can't get back into this one. They can't win this one, and that is going to be the first round for Heroic. <sighs> A couple of mistakes, well, one from Yuri and a Keserato just gets picked off the top of the stairway. Skulls does what he can, but it, it's not enough in the end. I don't love that. I would have really liked to have seen them go for that in, in a winnable 2v2, but but I mean, I also do, I understand that the idea and the sentiment behind saving it. You have a 5 nothing lead, you don't have any utility to put onto the bomb to smoke off any of the choke points. Cello had to, took a lot of time to rotate over safely. Beautiful triple kill from Skulls. Unfortunately, they can't do anything to capitalize upon it. Good job, boys. But Yuri's the one who's sitting there saying, my bad, boys. Took his eye off that gap towards Palace to throw utility and gets punished for it. OK, 
Defense Serato. Bound to get in a duel with Kixan and Nertz in towards underpass. He's going to swing into the fight. Dexter and Nertz win the opening duels for Heroic. Two players up with a minute 30 left. Starting to feel that Dexter impact. Back-to-back -back rounds. Good work with the Ops. Skulls going to go for information. He's clearing this. He's clearing it, but it won't matter. Shush is holding the angle, and Skulls walks right into it. All of a sudden, a five on two. And Fallen and Cello may want to consider one of the two of them bailing out of their position to meet up with the other one and just see if you can keep these weapons alive. Yeah, they want to save. They want to have the same result as last round. Good on Furia, though. Or, excuse me, good on Heroic. Slow-paced opening. Finding two picks in middle from K. Serato and Yuri, who are setting up a little bit of aggressive resistance. Oh, they're coming to fall in. Nice shot. Kicks hand down. Shush just waited the whole round to ramp. And that is an instant trade. Yeah, beautiful shot from Fallen, though. If he could have gotten away, maybe he creates a, a chance. So Cello's going to back off. Money's an issue for Furia. Nothing in the bank after this. They've, kinda, they've done a great job at stabilizing here, Heroic. They sort of got knocked off their feet for the first five rounds. Yeah, and very quickly dealing like an economic blow in terms of how much money Fury has and how much they can invest into the next round and what options they'll be limited yeah. to. I wonder I how they, they feel about that 2v2 save now. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those scenarios where you save those weapons for the next round, you have a, a worse result in the follow-up, and now you're down to a situation your money's drained in. Yeah, it's it's hard. you can't as a player. I mean, look, we we can we, we can, can get to look we can back. say that kind of stuff. Yeah, we get to look back as a player. You have to say we we made the save and it gave us a really strong buy in the follow up round, and that's that's the victory. We failed that round, but nothing to do with the save. Oh, nice to see it from Fallen's perspective. Just so lightning fast from Shoes to respond to it. Unlike our earlier matchup, this is. All about survival. This is, you lose or out. You win, you progress. And the problem is, for Fury, I do feel like they've had a pretty tough run to get into stage two. You know, they play Liquid, and then the next game is heroic. And just, there's definitely teams that have had easier runs at this event. Sure. Well, that's going to be... But you just got to play the teams in front of you. I mean, you have to go into this and just say, this is a very beatable team. I guarantee you all five players on Fury, I think there's no world in which they should be losing to, Fury, to Heroic right well, now. Their teammate literally just landed yesterday and they yep. barely played any officials with him. Heroic worked their way into the B-bomb site for free. Fury is stacked elsewhere, so now setting up to try and get some cheeky exit kills. Headshots exchanged and it's the AK to come out on top. the results here for three rounds now for Heroic. Another game currently going on is still that opening Imperial Pain match. It is a very close affair. Currently 4-4 tied on map three. 13 tens in the first two maps of play. Heroic starting to look really good on their map pick. Starting to build into this T side. Going to have money flush behind them after this bomb explodes. Haven't lost any guns in this round. Absolutely perfect. And Fury is going to buy right back up into it. Round 9, they get a fight back. All passed over to Fallen. M4s on everyone else. Decent amount of nades. Fury lo looking to put a stop to this heroic run right now. They really need to... I mean... <laughs> It's very simplistic, just not not get picked off. We saw Caserato and Yuri get picked off being aggressive in middle. We saw Yuri, you know, the round before that, kind of turning his back over to Palace and getting picked off. Losing a lot of bodies with in situations where they don't really have a chance to have any effective reaction. Here comes that B ploy, kicks in at the front of the attack. Yuri couldn't handle it, nor can Cello. And this is starting to become very dominant for Heroic. Good call from Kixen as well. In a round where you know Furia, if they buy, is going to be tough on utility because the economy you put them in, there's no Molotov in their way as they kind of execute out the b holes. There's no nades streaming in to stack on a couple of players. They get out really, really clean with no challenges as their flashbangs soar in the air. 
And that's an easy fourth round for Heroic. How quickly a five round lead can fade away. Hasn't really been much of a fight in these last three rounds for Furia. Two kills in the last three. It's been a lot of saving. Just getting bodied. Here comes Tessus. He wants to rip some of these weapons away from them. Fallen holding the ankle. Tessus gets by that shot. But he's not going to be able to get into Palace. And then time out taken because, yeah, this has fallen out of Furious' hands. This has fallen out of any kind of control that they've had. It's four in a row for Heroic, and they haven't done anything all that special. Couple good mid picks, couple good picks on executes. Good job exploiting the low economy of Fury in the previous round with that B hit. But with only two players falling, Fury comes right back into a full buy. Urgent conversation from them to nurse this lead that has dwindled down to just one single round. This is Kicksand's entry path, hops out the window, fantastic flash buying from Dexter. Yuri is fully blinded, giving Kicksand the advantage in that fight. And once those two kills come in, it's all good night for Furia. Okay, to listen in. And now the top mid Molly comes in. Clearing out those back boxes. Fallen's given some vision for a moment, but Nertz creeping out of ramp. Oh, spots out the ticket player. Now the element of surprise is ruined. They know where Nertz is. They know he's on Tetris. Respond with some utility, trying to force him back, but none of it really connects onto him. So he takes a few steps back to safety. Now it's Shusha's turn to poke and prod. He comes out through underpass. Fallen was previously... Looking towards middle, he's gone back to address the problem at ramp. Yeah, but even this is all risky. Uh, Fallen and Caserato were stood over a jungle, looking towards Khan, looking towards a ramp. No one was watching Palace. It wasn't blocked off by a smoke. If the heroic player had been there, could have been the second time disaster strikes from that position. Complete mid control for heroic. There's really not a lot of utility for Furia to do to hold them back, so they're not playing in aggressive stances. Here comes Shush through the connector smoke. Oh, he turns his back, exposes himself completely to Kesarado inside of jungle. And Yuri's trying to chime in through the connector as well. Kesarado had to change his position due to the fire. Follow up Molly coming in. And Kesarado cannot stick around jungle. And they're stuck. They're running into each other at Murder Hole, which oh. has got to be panic situation. Skulls. Skulls. Big headshot. Lovely shot coming in from Skulls. Second is even better. And it's another huge 3k from Skulls inside of the site. Cello comes in to clean up the rest. And Skulls is saving Furia on this A site. That is a beautiful triple kill. While the rest of Furia seemed like they were in disarray, not even sure of how they were going to organize for the retake, struggling to get through the murder hole. Skulls just trots right in. No one from Heroic watching the ticket booth, and he takes complete advantage of it. Boom. Nerds must have been jiggling and just missed the timing, but what a great sequence for Skulls. His second triple kill basically alone at that A bomb site in this half. And this one leads to a round win. And this one leads to a round win. <laughs> we love it. And we wear it. It's AWP out for Dykstra. Going up against that of Fallen in mid here. Grenade is going to go over the top of the boxes, land right in behind Dykstra. And then burn him out of a comfortable spot. Fortunately for Dykstra, he doesn't get taken down, but he does lose half of his health. Oh, a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more as well. Yeah, add that HE on top of it, baby. Hey, Serrano's still peeking and challenging against that AWP. Skulls, this round going to play more aggressively, uses the cover of that Molotov to clear the close angle, get a little bit of information of what's waiting for Fury at a ramp, which is absolutely nothing. Mid-round utility, towards window, towards Khan. Fury with, or excuse me, Heroic with the bomb lined up in the B-halls. Looking to split up catwalk preps, leave Nerds as a lurk. Skulls. Over the top of the connector, Smoke Kesarado is with him. Good trading back and forth from both squads, but this time with Kicksand's kill, that puts Heroic ahead on players, but a shot from Fallen stops them from crossing safely into the B-bomb site, and Dexter is stuck alone. He takes one look at the time and realizes this is a 1v2, or he can maybe maneuver a clutch out of it. He's going to go into the underpass. This is perfect. This is the big gap. 
Yuri realizes, Ooh, yeah. senses the timing. Dexter's going to look for this, though. He's got the scope out already. He's more worried about Cher. And top middle. Will he see Yuri in time? Dexter, oh, takes the shot, it lands, but it's not enough to bring down Yuri. And now Dexter switches out to the M4, and the belly of the beast begins to rumble as Dexter, the monstrous clutch being set up, but he's stopped by falling. He plants on the reverse side at default, worried about being exposed to CT, and that ends up costing him his life. Good job for Fallen, getting there at a perfect moment to make sure even if Dexter plants the bomb, he doesn't really have an escape. You can kind of cut him off uh, as Fallen did with the kill, but even if, even if Dexter goes the other direction, you eliminate so many possibilities of where he can play in the post plant. And Furia get back on track. Two in a row now, up seven to four, going into the final round of the first half. Second time out in the half here for Heroic. <laughs> you gotta love Jello. He's hyping the boys up. He yeah, definitely. He's, he's got a whole routine. He just hypes himself up, then the boys up. He's got like a little script there for yeah, Fallen. Yeah, he does. Falls in the action as Heroic want to talk things over. They're second. Saw really wants this final round, this fifth round on T side Mirage. Toothless. You know that's from Jason. I don't. You're gonna you're gonna learn. I'm gonna as learn. As a dad. Okay. How to train your dragon. Oh sure, I can see that. It's fantastic. I've never seen it. I I've, I can see the the artwork of the yeah, of yes. the movie. It's one of the uh, one of the greatest soundtracks of a movie of all time. It's very complex, very okay. beautiful. That's a bold statement with it things is. like Lord of the Rings out there. Well, it's not better than that. Okay. Just making sure I know where I'm putting not it in the, the, in the hierarchy. I said one of one the of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Howard Shore will not be beaten. Last round of this first half. It is a good start here for Fury as Yuri rips apart Nerds, and it looks like a little bit of proactive play into the ramp, Jason. Yeah, there's finally those mid pushes paying off for Yuri in case Serato got punished earlier. This time Ooh. Yuri's got the opening kill. Shush gets a little bit distracted, but still comes back and recovers. That's Skulls, who's had the hot hand to go down. Fall in. Oh! Boom! <laughs> good night, Tess says goodbye. And that's Fury up a player again. Minute 20 seconds. Shush took damage in his engagement, so he's not really in a position to force a play out ramp anymore. No one from Heroic is together at the moment. The bomb is just now joining up on the back of Dexter, joining with Kixen up in the B halls. Kixen's had some good entries at this part of the map, and at the moment, they've only got one player to contend with. That's Cello, but he's got an AWP. Yeah, he's got the AWP. That's the key. Are they going to use the utility, or are they just going to walk dry past this window? I think you're going to want to go contact as long as humanly possible, right? And the AWP surely catches one because of that. Yeah, and you've never seen an AWP on this side of the map. But well, we know Fury can pull this double AWP out, but they go right into it. That's the first shot. Now they know what they're up against, and Cello is aware not to repeak. He creates a corridor of cover with that smoke, and Yuri's arrived in the rotation. Dexter has to come off it. It's been a four-kill half from Dexter. It doesn't look like he's going to get too many opportunities to get more than that. He is down and out. It is Fury in and four up after the first half here on the day of survival in stage one of Cologne.
Eagles shined for Furia in the first half as they take an 8-4 lead defending on Mirage. We switch sides now. Heroic is going to be on the CT side. Furia attacking into them. In this series for elimination or progression, one or the other for these two teams, this is just map one. Just map one, and currently it's tough to call, but you want to see more out of Dacer. You definitely want to see more out of him as this tournament goes on. Yesterday we excused the fact that he traveled in on the same day, but now you want to see something out of him on the CT I mean, side. Dude, you want to see more out of everyone on the heroic side, right? Dexter, True, sure. We can bring that up all the day, all, all, the, all the time. Nerds as well. Yeah. Like, where's his dynamic, forceful rifling that swings rounds in their favor? We need that. Shush, we need some of that, especially on the CT side where he's considered a very well, underrated player on defense. Well, that is not going well for Shush to kick things off. Dexter delivers, though. Two kills with the jewel. He's under the wood. He goes back for a third, but Fallen denies that access. And in fact, Fallen is sharp, and he's shooting. He's got himself a chance and a clutch, but Tessus from the jungle is just too much for Fallen to handle. That's so unreasonable out of Dexter. I feel like he wasn't even aiming. He was just like clicking as fast as he can, Rapid jiggle fire. peeking into it, aiming with his strafes, and it all works out. Oh, I see Cello buying a shotgun. Nah, he's, he's giving he's that been, right yeah, back. Sell he's, that, sell that right back. He's giving that right back. They're actually trying to figure out what they want to buy though, because it, they are going to go for force here, Furia. So it's Yuri on a, a Galil. We'll see that when we come out of this replay, and we also got P250. So not really too much to talk about. Like it's it's. Kind of a weird buy, to be honest. Fallen's giving everything over for that. Yeah, but that's that's fine. You get to salvage the, the Galil, and you've at least thinned them out. That that part kind of falls apart with Kixon finding that kill in towards B. You're hoping maybe that one kill, even in a 4-on-4, four four, the defense has to spread a little bit thinner, and you can find some gaps to work with, but now they just got to go right back at it. No armor, no utility for Furia. So Heroic should be able to handle this pretty pretty easily. Shrinking the map with a push in B halls, shrinking the map with Shush pushing a ramp. All that's left really is for Furia to be in mid and Heroics putting that together. Nurts with that MP7 makes it look clean. So we got 4K from Nurts to kick off this second half. Sure, against weaker weapons, but hopefully it fuels up some confidence for the CT side. We know how good it can be, in particular on Mirage. This is the map pick of Heroic. Nurts asking or demanding Dexter to, to do something for him with a molly. I love this glass, man. That's one of the best things out of its counter trade is that a smart glass. That's cool, baby. It's real cool. I want it for my shower. Oh, yeah? You just turn it on. Private mode. Yeah. And then if you're feeling like you want to not be surprised, on private mode. Do you have a lot of use for private mode and not private mode? Not yet. Shower? Okay, not yet. Sure. We're all working towards that. Yeah, we're working towards that. It's a daily struggle, bettering myself. AK's on three. Galil here for Yuri. And Mr. Nice Guy falling. He's not bad falling right now. He's on attack nine. Well, I mean, that's a philosophy he had when I when I was working with him at Liquid as well. And, and it was his constant thing he was preaching is like, especially with someone like a Liege on the team, was like, dude, I'm going to drop you an AK-47 in these rounds. Like, there's no point for you to not have an AK-47. You can get kills. You can do economic damage. You're good enough as well to just completely win the round on your own with a single AK-47. So he really enjoys that concept of always having some element of doing damage to the opposition, even in rounds where you're not likely to actually win it. Smoke will soon start to fade away, but it's been instantly replaced at the perfect time. And I don't know if Furia can wait that smoke out. I heard a footstep in towards the bomb site. Now they hear some spam. Dexter realizes it's not my time to move. I've got to watch. They're coming through connector as well here, Furious. It's going to be a split. Two through Palace, two through Khan and Skulls. Great job. He's opened up on Nerds. Time is starting to tick, though. 25 seconds remaining in this round, and Shush gets aggressive. Goes into the ramp. Yuri's blinded. Dexter steps up with a kill on Skulls and kicks out through the connector. Removes the rest of the threat of Furia. And now it is a one-round lead for Furia. That's all they've got left, and that should shrink completely in this round because they're out of money, and Heroic are seven rounds on the board now. The, the replenished smoke at A ramp was everything. I mean, that, that uh, two smokes there delayed this execute for, what, 20, 30 seconds? Yeah, and there was that, 40 seconds on last and the second smoke came in. And then as soon as it clears, it's a pop flash through, so you waited all that time for absolutely nothing. But all that time being wasted while they're just stalled out gives Heroic time to piece together what's happening on the map and start closing in. So then they have fast flanks. Then they have an AWP waiting to pick you off as you try and cross in. 
Yeah. Heroic's defense looking good in the early stages. And that was tough to accept for Yuri. You could see that on his face right there. And uh, now they're down to Deagles and P250s again. They have not had the ideal start on the T side. Nice shot from Skulls. Bro, he's on one today. He really is feeling it, isn't he? If you lost confidence in why Skulls was picked up in the first place. Uh, yeah, by Liquid. Uh, this game's given you a little bit of a reminder. It's nice to see him with a smile on his face. Cello down off the bench. Keserato with an opportunity. That's another D coming in. Kickstand goes down. The rest of his teammates need to flood out of the apartments now and fall in leaps to the site. That's a bomb plant at least. And what else can they get out of this? That's the question now for Furia. They don't have too much to play with other than... A couple of these pistols still in hand, and Fallen's blasted out of the bomb site. Skulls is coming in late, but I don't yeah, think Yuri can late. hold them back at bay oh, for he's long doing enough. Decent. Yeah, he's doing everything he can. Nade's gonna end him, and that's the round. Bomb's not planted for Skulls whatsoever. Even a smoke on top of it. Defuse will start coming in, and Skulls may be able to grab one right at the end. He would need to leap out right now and stop that defuse, but he won't. And Dexter turns to find him right at the end. So tied up 8-8. Eight to eight. Heroic shrink that gap completely. The bomb plant, it lifts the cash up quite significantly for Furia. They're going to have everybody back on their primary choice of weapon. And they'll have plenty of utility. Especially with the losing bonus as well. Now keep in mind, in the first half, it was Fury on the CT side getting off to a 5 to nothing start looking really good. And that's when Heroic started piecing things together. We're at a very similar junction in the second half to where Fury has probably seen enough to have some ideas. Now with this kind of a buy, as you mentioned, the best yeah. one in some time. It's time to capitalize. It's time to get going. Coming out mid is Furia. And they send their danger man, their fearless warrior of Cello. To do that battle, to do that dirty work, and then around these smokes. They start to fade away at top mid. They'll replenish it with utility, Cello eating flashbangs. But he doesn't care, it doesn't slow him down, he goes right past. Oh, he's acted as a distraction at least. The trade is confirmed by Skulls, and he is cracking the Skulls open of the defense. He keeps going, finally stopped by Tessess, who tries to double up but can't do so. Furious trading is effective, and they stay a player up with a minute, four seconds left. Two players on the board for Heroic, and they're so far away from this. They've just got to save, and that results in Furia taking a small lead again. Skulls is in carry mode. He's doing so much work. The trade on Cello, the follow-up entry kill into the bomb site, even more damage. Even spotting out the jump out window, grabbing him down to half HP, and allowing that trade to be easier. Skulls is a beast right now. Yeah, he really is. He is really just popping off at the moment. It's great to see Skulls getting to this level. I mean, if you think back to his early portions of his career, he was he was like this in the Brazilian teams. He was this standout player, the one everybody was getting excited about. We were wondering, how do we get him out of these squads? How do we get him into a better team? And obviously that dysfunctional liquid squad was not the ideal place for him to flourish. And he feels like he's at home in Furia. So far, he's the head of the house. Yeah, at least today. Yeah, today, definitely. <laughs> Casarado owns the building. Though. Yeah, I was going to say. He's the he's, landlord. Uh, he's paying the bills. <laughs> Nine to eight. Yeah, it's a good pick of the pace up as well for Fury. As soon as they turn that corner, it's the go sign. It's like, all right, no no need to be quiet anymore. Smokes are going to start fading in con. Let's get up catwalk. And nice trades from Fury the whole way through. One round lead. And a timeout used by Heroic. Interesting. Their third and final timeout used at this point in the game. Saul obviously is not... wants to have a conversation about something. Whether it's something he doesn't like, whether it's something he wants to remind and emphasize. You don't even talk it. It just, it feels, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it feels, it feels early to me considering the money that they have. Yeah, so it's not talking. It's perhaps it's a timeout for Kicksand. Yeah, so like a, more of a team talk rather than the coach having input there. Well, no more chances for Heroic to slow down the action. Take a breather. They're just going to have to rely on Fury to call some timeouts that they can benefit from. Unless it goes to OT. Unless it goes to OT. And right now, scoreline's close enough to believe that is a possibility. Dexter's off on the CT side. He's going to be going out to the window. Smoke is up. He'll jump himself into the ladder room. Fallen's also got his AWP out top mid. He's boosted right now on the head of Cello. Just look at that connector swing. There's no aggression coming that way. Instead, 
more advanced CT push through the apartments from Kicksand. Fury was doing this a ton to Heroic in the first half as well. Like three or four rounds, they had this kind of push towards half up the B halls. Early warning system and, system and opportunity for a fast flank if needed. Yuri's pushing up through the underpass to come back and address a possible aggression from the CT side. Doesn't want to overextend. Doesn't know if the orbs posted up on this angle, so doesn't want to swing into the open. Utility mid for mid control from Furia is just starting to come out now. Still four smokes remaining. They got plenty. Happy to just kind of slow play this round. And we had under a minute on the clock. Dexter has seen nothing. He's about to have to change his position. Molotov forces him further back, keeps him at bay. But here comes the attack into the A-bomb site via connector. Cello is looking for that opening. They heard the spam coming from Nerds over in window room, and Nerds has had to back off, so there's actually access for them to make it up to the bomb site. Oh, Tessa is still inside of that smoke. This smoke is creating perfect temporary cover. Time's an issue. Kickstand's coming back. Straight through that connector. Damage being done to Yuri. Yuri's finished off. Tessis on the double kill. And Kickstand, he's chomping at the bit to get involved, but his teammate Tessis is taking everything, and that plant can't happen yet. It can't happen at all just yet because Dexter threw that smoke. He's denied the life of Skulls and with 10 seconds left, Furia have to try and get it. Have to get it down but Nerds with the last second headshot through that box. No time for Cancerato. No time for Furia. And this is 9-9 nine to nine on the board. Absolute chaos at the end. Yeah, and I mean, again, this is another round where Heroic kind of sensed what was coming very, very early on. That fast flank, that player who was pushed up in B halls the whole time, finds a perfect timing to slow down the split from Khan, and there's just nothing Fury can do to actually take this bomb site. Everyone's coming from Khan, nobody's swinging out Palace, nobody doing anything to clear out the players inside the site behind the smoke. Stalled out by the flank. I mean, if you look at all the impact, to, to all the kills basically came from Ticket. You had the first couple from Tessas, and then Nerds with their final blow. And look at how safe they were spamming that bomb planner. Yeah, they they didn't have to worry about yeah. anything. There was no worries whatsoever. Time out taken here for Furia. A second used. Fallen using this chance to be vocal. Skulls has to go to a tech nine. Give him an A. Give him an AK, surely. No time. I would like to kill him. Left side is a bench. Let's go, boys! Very happy with that celebration, nerd. The the vocal one, I believe that. This is a setup outside of the A site. Furia are going for a direct hit. And Shush is playing from Ticket, so it's a passive setup here for Heroic. No one playing in front of the smokes. Heroic deploys his own defensive smoke here, Shush. This is a classic. There's the set piece, the tons of utility from Furia just to get the bomb planted. The question is, when the smokes fade, do they have enough to wow. hold back Heroic? And they what? begin the retake before the smokes fade. So they get a couple early kills on Dexter and Shush. Now a man advantage, and they can fall back. They can get a little bit of passive, set their feet, and set up some crossfires. Yeah, and Cello took one jump up, and Tess has ripped his head off. And they're coming back in on this retake. Fallen's playing from Sandwich, undetected. What a shot flicked up on Nerds, and that is it, really. He can't get past Fallen when he's just fragging like this. And he's on the hunt. He knows where Tessus is. He's chasing after him, trying to get rid of him. And they're just charging down. He's thrown a smoke down to just keep himself alive. But Yuri's coming through the murder hole. There's no way Tessus gets Damn. away. And it's Fallen that's had enough. Old man still got it with the AK-47. He does. That's he's some, looking sharp. That's some crispy shooting from Fallen. 12 and 9. He's had enough with that AK as well. He's like, I'll get, get the all back out. Oh, I and it's it. so important to clear out those kills at the end as well. There's no money left for Heroic. So it goes from a disaster in the last round for Furia to coming back with a, just a simple A execute. And they've broken the money of Heroic at a crucial point in this game because this is going to allow Furia up to 11 rounds on Mirage. And this is Heroic's map pick. Up next is Anubis. Which they looked... A little bit raw on yesterday. Cello's going to clear up Catwalk on his own. Not moving past the ladder room, which is a popular place for a trap. Now clearing it out, and he'll have a good position to make sure nobody can rotate over. Wants to peek. Wants to, wants to figure some things out of this B-bomb site.
His teammates inside A are letting him know the stack is at the B-bomb site, so... Be cool, man. Drops the smoke, backs away. Okay, Serato dead. Oh, Just Lord. absolutely destroyed. Fallen. Fending them off. And you'd really not like them to save this AK-47 if you can help it. You don't want to give them anything that can help their economy down the stretch. Another one. It might be two. It is indeed going to be two AKs. That's a great find for Heroic. Considering that's, they had nothing. Yeah, that's actually not... I mean, calling it a victory might be a little bit too much, but, yeah, you know, glass half full. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, now they've got a full glass. They've got the full buy coming in. Except for the op. That's the one thing they're missing on Dexter. Although, as you kind of pointed out, it hasn't been ultra impactful across this half. A couple nice rounds with it, but hasn't been influential in terms of dictating what's occurring on the map. Cello, once again, the foundations to Fallen's boost. And he spots out how close Nurse is, and it would be ill-advised for Nurse to swing into two players, so he decides to drop back in a connector instead. Yeah, unfortunate miss from Fallen. That would be a sick kill to have to put him in a five-on-four in a round like this. However, you're going to be very pleased with the fact that you've forced back that aggression. You know they can't maintain that stance. So you've at least solved the problem. Nurt's playing behind the con smoke. A little bit of an edge over the top of it that he wants to toy with. Three smoke out the window. Nurt's once again just happy to be patient. Has to consider the fact if Fury could boost a player up in that. Nerds has a mall. Okay, he's just used it. He's just used it towards under window. I'm not sure if he heard that sound cue. He's moving off towards B. All that Heroic know is that Fury have mid control. They don't know if this mid control is going to turn into a B hit or an A hit, and they're starting to try and piece that together now. That flash clear, if they didn't spot Skulls' feet, it's an issue because the third player is rotated to the B bomb site. 30 seconds. Now 20. And this is where the attack needs to happen for Furia. What a flick up from Fallen. Now Skulls activates behind Shoots with a distraction set up. Tessis is short, can only topple Cello. And now the bomb goes down. Furia in a four versus three and Heroic. They have to save here. They can't throw all the resources in, surely, but they're close enough towards CT where they might go for it. They have to test and see if they'll get a free kill. They have to test and see if there's going to be a mistake, if they can pick one off, and then there's the possibility. Well, now that they don't have that kill, and Nertz is committed towards CT. Oh, it's, a, it's a tough one here for Heroic. They're going. Perserato's giving them a kill by jumping into jungle. No kit. A 2v2, suddenly a missed shot from Fallen, and Heroic right back in this, but time is certainly a problem with no kit on their backs. There's not enough time to defuse this, even if they got those final kills. Kicksand will be the only Heroic player that survives this battle, and it's 12 rounds for Furia. It's map point on Heroic's map pick. And this Panther is starting to purr. It's classic pain for Heroic. They get just enough kills to make them feel like it's dualable, to make them feel like they have to go for it, and then everything gets removed from their control. All the weapons taken away. But I can't even fault them for giving it a test, for giving it a try once they find those two kills. Look at how little of his feet he saw. Nothing wrong with his old age eyesight, that's for sure. Or his reactions. Nothing. He's still going. 14-9 for Mr. Fallen. The Toledo Torpedo. Shush. Oh, pushing Palace. He's not alone. He's got kicks in with him. Skulls did start at Palace, but he took a few steps back. Shush still intermittently taking steps forward. Skulls is completely left T spawn now. He'll join the rest of his pack. This could be a vicious finish on the B bomb site.
The setup here is Nertz inside of apartments with a FAMAS. Ooh, awkward, awkward. Tessas really would have loved that to have been cleaner. No fault of his own. Just an awkward moment for that peak and fight to come in. Dexter gets one, but now he's got to turn back towards the B-bomb site to help Nertz. Well, he's pulled the distraction away from Nertz. Dexter now dealt with, and Nertz just lands that shot right between the eyes on Skulls. It's now a two versus four. Fury up flounder here. It's a good round for Heroic. And Yuri's stuck at jungle, nowhere near that bomb. Kills matter, though, in this situation. I, this, this is a wonderful round for Heroic, who finally get to take a deep breath and say, all right, you know, we, we stopped this hit pretty clean. We get some upgrades. Economy's not going to be a complication in the next round. But Yuri content to just sit and let this round tick away. Kicks and coming in behind him, walking into his crosshair. Timing's everything. Yuri's not paying attention to it. He'll go down for free. Oh, oh, maybe not for free. I take that back. One. Not for free. He it's got a free sample. Yeah, it's just who's the first player he makes contact with and promptly removes his head. 12 to 10. Two more chances for Furia. They got money. They got plenty of it. And Fallen, calm as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber, I should say. I don't know if cucumbers are calm. Well, it depends if the cucumber's living and it's uh, been genetically modified to be sort of personified. True. That's a good point. I didn't think about that one. Yeah. It's like Pickle Rick, but <laughs> Colin Cucumber. And now we head into round 23. Heroic begin their fight. They want to try and get us into overtime. It is their map pick, and it's survival here in Cologne. Furia really don't have a lot to work with if they're to lose this round. Nineteen hundred bucks they'll get after this. Cello would be at two thousand. K Serato twenty three fifty. You're not going to get a whole lot of powerful weapons on the field to play again. Back towards the B bomb site. Even though they got demolished in the last round, Fallen's just saying, "Look, they wrecked us. They won't expect it again." And oh boy, is he right? He is so right. Kicks in. Oh, K Serato deals with kicks in. Kicks him out of there. Now Nertz fires in from connector. Tess says he's going to try and delay that plan, but it's too late. Surely Molotov burning skulls. He's going to die. But the bomb plant will come in. Keserato is now becoming ferocious. He pushes forward in towards the market. Well, you should still in a flash combo. Oh, That's damn. sick. That's perfect. That works out nicely. Keserato's down. Yuri's boosted up on those ninja boxes. And Fallen is taking most of the attention away to the apartments. Tessis is going to clear many positions, but this one he will not think about. It is Dexter in the 1v2, and we've asked for impact. We've desired it. Oh! No scope right to the skull, and he's going to get right on it. He's going to stick it. Dexter could deliver the moment that gets 11 rounds, but he just about pulls that defuse off. What a ridiculous shot from Dexter. No way. We've been waiting for his arrival in Cologne this whole time, and that is a moment to step up. Beautiful shot from Dexter, but you gotta say, Yuri surely realized his position had been given up, right? Yeah, but maybe he's thinking that Shirley would have dropped off. Shirley Yuri would have went elsewhere, and, and he's not expecting Dexter to just come around and impale his face with a no scope. That's nuts. Plant helps. Let's go, guys. It's B again. Furia have players outside of the B bomb site again. Third time lucky, Jason. Oh, why not? Why not? Fallen might have outcalled himself here in this round. This might be just too much. Cello and Yuri down, trying to hit a nasty timing before Heroic expected. But now they're stalled out by all the utility. And this has overtime written all over it. Tess holds on as long as he can. Skulls fights back, and this is the last round of regulation. Furia stay committed with their feet planted outside of this B-bomb site. It's Skulls and Keserato, two of the sharpest tools that Furia can play with. But it still, still looks impossible. And and they're even, I mean, they're, they're trying to pause and wait, make Heroic kind of shift off this, but they're boxed in. Nerds is already all the way back, so he's calling out. There is an escape route through underpass, but they're going to press forward. There's the footsteps. Kicks and looks left. Head oh, spotted. spotted. Oh, he's dealt with. Skulls has taken him out. Now 40 seconds left. 2v3. It suddenly looks a lot better here for Furia. Dexter hasn't given away that he's standing here inside of the site, though. He hasn't given away 
that he is currently present, but now he will. He's charging in. This time, Cancerado deals with him. They turn right back, and there's absolutely no way Furious steal this away in this fashion. It is Shush to try and save Heroic, to try and keep overtime a dream and a reality. Shush moves into the site. MP9 close. Cancerado so low, but he'll still hit that shot. And that is one hell of a turnaround from Furia. Falling with the balls to call back to back. Back-to-back -back B hits, and Furia take map one. Had to take Mirage, and I, I, the nice thing too, uh, the desk outlined it wonderfully at the start of this series as well. A little bit of risk built into this this Anubis pick from Furia in, in some senses, even despite the fact that they've looked sure. pretty decent on it. Um, but they have that safety net of Nuke as the third map, which has got to make you feel good. They do. It? There's just yeah. so many chances now for Furia to take this series, and it's going to be heroic gathering outside of the B bomb site. This could be heavy into that B bomb site. And no one's home. Yeah, no one's home. Furia or Yuri and Skulls just kind of walked all the way through canals. Now they're going to get the indication that it's coming back in. I don't know if they. Oh, it's the bomb. Careful, Tesses. Skulls wants these long range shots. Bomb going to try and get planted. Skulls might be able to have the angle. They're going to plant backside. The entire T side of Heroic pushes towards Temple and CT spawn. They reverse the plant positions, and this retake is going to be very difficult. And that feels like the, the literal worst call that could have happened for Look Furia. at this lurk from Dexter as well. He's going to be dropping behind canals at the yeah. end of the day also. Well, they have no kit. They have to go fast, and Fallen's going to just jump up onto the back of the platform. Here comes that flank. It's hurt. Cancerado, he's got ears ready to go, and Dexter still clears him out in dark. So far, so good for Heroic. And now this post plan setup looks like it's going to end up with a heroic pistol victory. Shush is just dispatching them inside of the connector. And it's now Yuri left alone with no time to win this. Good damage on the way out, but it's heroic to win the pistol round with a simple call to be. It does feel like that was the one gap in the Fury of pistol well, setup. I don't know what the plan was from Fury. They had a three player stack at A pushed in towards A main, and then two players pushing out dark into canals, despite the fact that there's no information. So, yeah, it felt like they were very much leaning on kind of clearing out water, you know, crunching on any kind of a slow play towards the A bomb site. And I think really the beauty of this round from Heroic is the decision to plant on the other side towards Temple. They realize two players in dark and that they're not mounting, they're not feeling any resistance in the site itself and just say, all right, we'll take the safe plant and we'll have very strong positions. No second round by from Furia. No, not at all. I'm going to go for a little stack here in the A bomb site, but we did get to see the victor of Imperial versus Pain. It was Pain that came out on top. That was a grueling first series of the day. Payne's opponent in MIBR has been uh, been off for quite some time. They've had some time to get some food, relax, focus up for that game. That'll be happening a little bit later on. We also got the Mongols versus Eternal Fire. Big versus Falcons getting underway. So lots of Counter-Shark action coming to your screens across both ESL CS channels today. Yeah, keep your eyes glued here. Hang out with us. Smoke towards the back of the B-bomb site. Smoke towards Temple as well. Yuri's got armor and a deagle, but here's nothing behind this utility. All right, I'll give you five bucks if he hits this shot, Dinko. All right. Oh, he hit it. He hit the shot. You knew what I meant. You owe me a beer. That's <laughs> <laughs> Yuri down. Yuri's just rattled straight through him with that MP7. And it's not going to go anywhere here for Fury. I mean, looking at, at Heroic yesterday, they yes. had a lot of problems, but but Anubis did not look comfortable in, in any way, shape, or form. What are some of the what do you, what do you want more out of Heroic, just in general on this map, Jason, for them to improve today? Do you think uh, that, do you think what we've seen from them yesterday is fixable? I think I think the easiest the easiest I mean I don't know if I'd call it fixable, but the easiest thing that you could have in your benefit that's going to make this map a lot easier for you is Dexter with the AWP, especially on the CT side, being proactive, moving around the map very very well. If he can start to have impact, that's one thing. Despite some of the impact runs we've seen from him, we haven't seen him really dictate the kind of Counter Strike that Furia can play across a half. Right? Yeah, that that true. that op influence hasn't really changed the way Furia is trying to play the game. And we thought that big old no scope on Mirage is going to bring them to overtime. 
but it didn't. Yeah, it got him. It got him probably so hyped up because the next round he was he was very aggressive in his in his in his selection of <laughs> in his decision though, making. Yeah. The more confident he gets, the more aggressive it's he like, will be. I just had this banger no scope and had this banger clutch, so it's probably gonna happen again. <laughs> It's gonna work. Seeing this, uh, seeing this a lot out of Furia. We saw it at EWC as well. Is they full save on the second round? The third round is a half buy of SMGs, so they can still have a very strong buy moving forward if they lose it. And this would be a great upgrade and reversal if they can steal it away. Also, if you can just do damage, it keeps your opponent's economy somewhat modest. Well, it's going against him, regardless of what the uh, the end goal is. Good job from Kay Serato. Double okay. D will kill. Cello chimes in. Back into a three on three. However, Heroic know where everyone on the map is from Furia. And they're going to start getting so a little bit Yuri. worried now, because Yuri's just chasing after them. Where's, oh, Cello. Oh, that that's the, the kill uh, you couldn't take. Nice shot from Nertz. Yeah, that, that's rough here for Furia. Their chances have just shrunk again. Yeah, they needed someone at this bomb site to delay. One more kill, harass, buy you an extra five seconds here or there. So really all they can be happy with at this point for Fury is, is the upgrade to the AK-47 on K Serato. He's going to save that. No reason for him to get anywhere close to this. And Yuri with a Galil, not the most valuable weapon. Going to see if he can grab one more, and he does. That's Degster going down. All right, Big's getting loud in the studio. Yeah, don't hear that often. I did enjoy, at least there's impression of, of Tabson earlier today. Oh Just, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was amazing. That was really nice. He nailed it. The legacy of FlyQuest lives on here in Cologne. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hello? Bomb's gonna go up. Three to nothing. For Heroic. Trying to stay alive in this series. It's a good start, but this is the hardest test they've had to face yet on Anubis. Fallen's got his ult out. So is Dexter. Yeah, and Kesarado's got 3,700 left in the bank. Yuri's uh, I like down this to little MP9 buy. It's cool. The fact that you have so much money for these gun rounds after that. It's an interesting one, especially because because you we do see them and they, as they almost did in that round, turn it in their favor. It's still a pretty dangerous scenario. So yeah, I mean we'll we'll see. I, I haven't really seen any teams kind of pick up and copy it. Not yet. But let's see if Furia. I mean, obviously it's it's having some success and they're enjoying it in practice. Let's see if they can start stringing together a body of work behind that kind of a tactic. Taking mid control. At least up to the double doors. Now they're gonna have to deal with a threat of Fallen in behind it. He looks to try and put a stop to them. It's a wild maneuver from Fallen. I don't know how he's alive. I don't know how he's alive. Oh, anyway, back he got, into he it. got the no scope. And he's going back again. Fallen is just on another level right now. Fallen going through the doorway, coming back around the other side. And that is heroic toppling to the power of the professor. It is so sick from Fallen to see him fired up. Man, that's the very definition of rolling back the years, vintage fallen, whatever you want to call it. That's what he was doing day in, day out, back in the day. And he just absolutely punishes Heroic for letting him survive. For letting him get away with the mistake. Nasty, nasty op work. Nurses. That started with us just going, what the hell is he doing? Why are you doing this, Fallen? I did. I did think his brain broke for a moment when he started <laughs> making that play. And then he went out again. And he did it again. And it worked. It's a classic esports double down. So, first run on the board for Fury. And Nert's going to just keep this AK 47 alive, not even chasing after any economic kills, economic damage. I'm liking the confidence across the board from Fallen today. Because he went for that B call on Mirage like three times in a row. And then he does that. He's backing himself individually <laughs> and as a caller. Yeah, that's fair. Hell yeah, Fallen. Oh. Send Cello out to die. You get the no scope. Then this shot, so sick. That's, you know there's a player out your left. That shot on Dexter is the crazy one. Like turning that corner and being prepared for that deep of a fight. <laughs> He's like, what? Yeah. Huh? He's like, oh, I didn't. I wasn't playing back then. <laughs> is this what it felt like every day? <laughs> yep, pretty much. Well, let's see if Fallen can build upon that. Let's see if he can put together a half with this AWP. Good chip damage on Inerts, down to 66.
Heroic super chill in this round. Feels like they just want to fall into a B hit. They've got kicks in close up in canals. He'll wait that smoke out. They can buy time for nerds to fall back to him if they want to pair up. Blast open that mid smoke. Fallen. Receives a lot of damage. He's down to 12 health. He'll still be happy he's standing. And he oh, that might. Well, Yuri and, Yuri and Skulls are the ones who are going to have the real issue. This is a lot of pressure being applied to Heroic. They're doing a very good job of kind of masking where this hit is going to end up. Huge frag from Cello. But now it descends onto the defenders of this B bomb site. Twenty-eight seconds. Shush locks in that bomb plant down on default. Cello through the smoke. Second kill of this round this time on Kickstand. Heroic are leaping through these smokes, trying to just have an element of surprise, some chaos that goes their way. But now they know exactly where Nerd says, and he peeks out again to see three heads peering right at him. It is Fury up finding some form here. CT side with two rounds in a row. Okay, back to back rounds. We've seen Fallen positioned in middle with the AWP. When does he start moving? When does he start changing? Change it up to the B bomb site to an A main peak? Hmm. Not a lot of money lost for Heroic here. Off the back of losing those two rounds. Maybe see some Tech Nines in, in the mix, but not expected anything else. No, timeout is called as well so that they can have a conversation about what kind of a buy they want to put together here, how much money they've got, how much they can save, how much they can spend. Fury coming back into this one with two very clean rounds. Five alive in the previous, four alive in the round before that. Two round loss bonus built up from Heroic. And they're going for the investment. Galil's coming out. Tech 9 on Tess's. Heroic want to try and go for a low buy chaos. You don't have a lot of nades, Heroic, after that initial salvo of the instant smokes. You're kind of in a situation where you need to group up. You ask when Fallen's going to change up that position with the Opal. Now he's over towards B. With every second that ticks on, he's getting more and more information as he pushes outside of B with Skulls. He's about to see that there's no one here from the T side. All right, Furia, you have no one watching the middle of this round. So two players inside the A bomb site. One of them is going to have to address it. Camera being smoked off by the T side to allow them to get some space. Start moving forward and prepare to execute onto the okay. site. That is a big boy kill. That is massive. That's one of those two defenders down without <gasps> even seeing him. Yuri crossing over. And they heard those camera. footsteps. They heard it, so they know there's a gap on B. They know there's a way to get into this B bomb site. And Fallen's leaving now as well. This B site is completely falling apart. This is completely opened up. I can't believe how perfect this is. Turned. Skulls is mid, misses the timing, doesn't see Nerds taking those steps back up those stairway, and they're completely ready for an A play that just will never come. And I think you save if you're Furia. If this if this bomb gets planted at the B bomb site and you're this fooled, I think you just say, we're beat. I wonder, <laughs> like, how? How has this happened? That is so crazy. Well, that's just one of those rounds you just gotta scratch your head and take a step back. All right, well, here's a question, Dinko, that I can pose to you. Oh, no, there's in a lot your, of questions in this In segment. your analytic mind? Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm good for. If you're, if you're heroic out of this win, I mean, you probably upgrade those Tech 9s to AKs, but what about them Galils? Like, what are you, you doing? Keep do, those but do you maybe just rinse back with this kind of a buy, yeah. but have some utility and just say, screw it, we got a freebie? Yeah, you got those Galils. That gives you a freebie, definitely, Jason. Like, what if you just play the economic game? No. You play, yeah, you play the economic game, Jason. You're right. <laughs> Stick with three Galos and Tech 9s? Is short. that your call? You go for the big short, whatever. All right, Tessus has an AK-47. You definitely keep the Galils, though. That's a very weird round. We don't get rounds like that very often. No. That sucked.
There was no, there was no killing. <laughs> there was no actual fight ever. We started talking about finance, man. That was boring. Mac 10 on kicks it. Let's get into the shoot. It's a. It's not a B rush, but they're gonna hit a very fast timing. Very, very fast. As soon as this Molotov fades, it's flash and go. Skulls. He's got a Fallen with him. Skulls that first gets traded through the smoke. Fallen, not in a real t comfortable spot with the AWP. Would love his teammates to come and help him a little further. He's got re-smoke too in dark. This is uncomfortable, but Cello, that is a massive kill to find. That's a 4v3. Now you can comfortably let that bomb go down and feel like you can play retake. Oh. But that smoke kill, there's nerds back on Yuri, and this is a 3v3, and you know there's a second player in there because you killed Yuri, not Fallen, and you heard that AWP. Cello, he's now coming back in from CT. He's actually slunk in pretty close, pretty silently. And he actually might have to be the player that creates the space that allows his teammates out of dark. Here comes that utility. Here comes that play right into Nurts. And there was just a little bit of chaotic communication. They couldn't figure out where Nurts was. And Nurts delivers death to four in the round. That is five up for Furia. And a direct hit into the B-bomb site results in this T side starting to swell. This is some phenomenal calling from Kixon in these past few rounds. I mean, the way he threaded the needle in the previous one and this one, just the uppercut towards that B-bomb site, sensing the weakness. And we talked on Mirage of wanting to see a little bit more out of, I mean, obviously Dexter's the main conversation, but more out of Nerts. He's bringing it to the table here on Anubis. Three round lead for Heroic. Another strong buy from Furia with the AWP in the field of play. But outside of one triple kill round, Fallen hasn't been able to land impactful shots. Uh, uh. Okay, Fallen. A little bit of a risk. Gets away with a slap on the wrist. Kicksand takes a few steps forward. Ever closer to the darkness, and he knows, oh, you can't have many bullets left. You can't have many bullets left whatsoever with that spam, Yuri. And Kicksand nearly gets away with a great opener. Now Fallen going for the aggressive peak. He's being detected. Doesn't feel comfortable to stay on that front. They're starting to feel suffocated in this B-bomb side, Furia. Oh, good shot from Fallen. They're starting to use a lot of utility as well, so they need to get some production out of these stances. Okay, Serato going to be tested. They step in front of the smoke. He's got to back away. He does have support in Cello. Do they keep going for this? Well, they, they've got testers coming in from camera, so it's going to be a two-pronged approach in just a moment. And that makes it really difficult for Furia to hold on. McNurtz goes down. Tessas hasn't quite come into camera yet. And now it's his time. Now it's his time to strike. He's gonna get two. They're not looking. Neither of them. Neither of them are looking. Oh, Tessis. He cracks it right open. Brings Heroic back into the round. That bomb goes down. Shush is locking the digits in a 3v3. Set up off the back of that. And you're starting to run out of money if you're Furia. Well, in particular, I'm falling. And they realize that it might not be the easiest retake. So they're setting up for exits. And those two kills from Tessis. Push. Heroic up to six. Furia not having the kind of performance they did against Liquid. No, and I think this was this is part of like kind of the I think the the conversation that the desk was sort of having is this this map had long been the permaban of <laughs> of Furia, just something they weren't really playing a whole lot of in in, in CS2 and. What a risk it is to pick this in an elimination game, an elimination series, and I think you're seeing some of the miss, you know, some of the miscues, some of the lack of comfort on this map within the Fury of players, and certainly, as we know, a lot of teams do on this map, uh, struggling to hold on to this B bomb site. And this is just a situation where nobody on Furia, it never clicked that mid was open, that camera was a point of danger, that nobody had cleared it, that nobody was watching it. And Tassis is given a free double entry. His first two kills of the map. Don't die. Don't get, don't get. I'm staying alive. I there is a nice one. Two side, two side. Two side then. Wait, guys. Two that. Nice, boys! I'm taking two. 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 i Four rounds up.
Yuri, losing a little bit of health in his dance to the flames. And he'll send the grenade in. It's not too bad, lands at the feet of Kixan. You know, in general, teams feel a little more comfortable on the T side. But it's starting to get to the point now where if you're, you're running out of opportunities to pick up CT rounds here, you gotta, gotta start picking up pace now. Tess and Kixan making their way through mid. Casterado, it's a double setup between him and Cello. Flash is good. Does it unleash Cello? It absolutely does. He really wanted a second. Had a great opportunity, but here's Fallen. Shot lands. It's not enough to bring down Shush. And the grenade, oh, it's all fumbled. He's scrolling through his grenades, couldn't quite find the right one. Now Fallen goes to the AWP instead, misses that second shot, but it's a whole lot of whiffs. And Fallen gets away with a USP kill somehow, some way. And it's Dexter now alone. So be a one. V2 for Dexter. He's got plenty of time. Changing the position, Yuri. He was spotted towards camera. And now moves around to work with Skulls against the op. They've got one Molotov. But Dexter with the AWP has plenty of chances to thin this out. He's going to peek towards heaven. The there first. it is. Now a one-on-one, -on -one, and it should be easy. Yeah, it should be easy to close this for Dexter. But the fire's up, and Dexter, the destroyer, with the headshot. Seven rounds for Heroic. And when it all falls to the AWPer, he will deliver you that impact. Yeah, that's really, really well done. Understanding you got to get a little bit aggressive as they enter into the bomb site to bring that into a one-on-one. -on -one. Give yourself some space to work with. And again, one more time, it's just the, the, the protocols, once the pressure is being applied of who's playing where, who's falling where, how do we work together between Cello and Fallen, not as effective as they would have liked. Fallen taking a few steps back. Oh, ho, Kixan stayed in the open a little too long and Fallen punishes him. Good opening here for Furia. Boost up for Dexter behind that molly. Doesn't see anyone evacuating the premises. Fallen. Fallen's got another. Yeah, just keeps striking. Castrado's position is strong. A little bit of lag on our screen, at least. And that's Nurse that goes down. Castrado couldn't double up. Fallen certainly will, though. And Shoes is now left in 1v4. This is Brown's all fallen. Good on him, too. 10 kills now with the AWP. And Shush has got nothing to do for 45 seconds. Fallen is, uh, it's, it's nice seeing him be this aggressive and proactive. Taking some B yeah. main peaks, taking some B dark peaks, grabbing passive angles, grabbing aggressive angles. He's been doing a little bit of everything. and It's unfortunate. I think there's really been, I mean, this round and the other triple kill round were massive. Other than that, it's been some some individual. He's, he has a, he's had a couple misses as well that could have turned the tides. But I like that he's going for them. Yeah. And I think it's probably cool to be able to call your own game too. You're, not, you're just calling every pick you're going for, every base, the whole setup. I, that's that's the life of an opera, isn't yeah, it? Like, so operas just get that luxury. So he's just able to enjoy life. Gets to see the whole map. Got a kill on every major area of the map. 1A, middle, and B. Oh, here we go. A little bit of aggression outside of B. I don't think Shush realizes it. Definitely oh, knows now. now. Know. Should know now by the trajectory. Definitely knows. And Tess is just going to try and draw attention away. Try and make it look like Shush is not there. They're just, yeah, they're they're happy that the presence, the, the minimal presence that they showed was enough to, to keep Furia back well, towards the bomb Shush to be so quick here. Oh, he's not giving that away. He had a second chance there. When he could have blasted one away with his deagle. It was pretty impressive. Finally, Fury get another round win. But 
you look at the money for Heroic, because a lot of these rounds have been so close, even in their victories, they are down to just two AKs and three digs. I think the, the key to this round might just come down to these two Molotovs on Skulls and Yuri, because they're playing it super passive. There's going to be a set piece that's about to come in. Likely at least one, probably both of them will be smoked and blocked off. So the Molotovs are going to be very important in terms of where they're placed. One to delay this push, Force kicks it into an awkward fight. Hit the go signal, but nobody Ooh. else from Heroic is following up. Yeah, Skulls is low off the back of that grenade coming into this obelisk, but it's a double lineup for Cello. He's going to spray down. Nurt's coming in now. Yuri's removed from the defense. And 30 seconds remaining. Remember, still in the sight of Skulls. But he's been cleared out. And Nurt's is just destroying them. This is so sick to watch for Nurt's. And he's going back. He's going right towards Keserato. And maybe a little bit too much at that range. It's Nurt's that goes down and thrusts his teammate into another 1v2. Dexter picked one of these up earlier. But that was with the AWP. This one's a bit tougher in the post plan. Fallen's just holding, patiently waiting for that mistake to come in. Cello's got some words for him. Finally, he's able to get loud. They've strung two together, Furia. 7-4. And despite the fact that it feels like they've been out of position and uncomfortable and in awkward situations throughout this half, Furia still putting enough rounds on the board to keep this dangerous, to keep this close. Nerds almost brings it right back. Cello trying to swing to trade his teammate, and Nerds is ready for everything. Final round of the first half here on Anubis. And with a bit of form picking up for Nerds, at least he's got the AK. Shush wanted to make a play. He wanted, to, he wanted to try and simulate this B hit. They've got smokes down towards dark. They got smoke down towards the B cross. He wanted to be the one to say, hey, we're rushing, we're rushing. But they're now going back over towards the A bomb site. It's Kay Serato. Flashes are at the ready. Dexter to send him through. First is up. Yeah, Serato blinded completely. Oh, he's just left in an island. Cello swings. He only gets one, and it's a quick play now. Speed is coming through for Heroic. Shush is even coming through middle. Falling with a big shot through that smoke. That's Tessa's down. Fallen falls away, but look at this from Shush. He goes back to address this problem. The rotation through the water. He gets one in the information on the whereabouts of Skulls, and they know exactly where he is. This will be an eighth round for Heroic. Nerds putting together a really, really good half for Heroic when they need it most. When they're on the verge of elimination, star player steps up. 15 kills from him and so many of them impact. He's been a stud on the rifle on Anubis in a way he wasn't on Mirage. And Skulls is going to try and have a go at this. Already spotted one up towards heaven. He's got a kit, but man, they're not giving him anything. And Dexter is going to clean up an easy one. It's 8-4 to four for Heroic fighting for survival at IEM Cologne. One more half and we'll find out if they make it to the third map.
Heroic fired up because they're back in this series. They conceded their map pick to Furia 13-11 in heartbreaking fashion. But when the battle comes to Anubis, Heroic are in the lead. Well, now they got to switch sides and play on the CT side. And, and let's see what kind of their organization looks like. Let's see what yeah. their kind of discipline looks like playing these bomb sites together. They were able to really exploit Furia and a lack of comfort in the positions that they were playing together. But it's not like they're, they're aces on this map either. Furia for the moment on the T side spread out on a default looking for any kind of push. No indication yet of what their plan is going to be and Heroic is just sticking together. The tank strat, four USPs pushing the extremity. Oh my god, just gets dispatched by Dexter, and now the attack is coming through camera. Shush blinded by the flash. And this is a big old swing that's getting stopped by Heroic with every step forward. It is just Serato and Furia fall apart. I'd have to see the replay, but I'm pretty sure th all three players of Heroic were blind from that first flashbang, and it's just the fact that Dexter is falling back late that keeps the attention of Furia away from the blind players. They got incredibly fortunate with that timing, I think. Well, it's both pistols going against Furia in quite convincing fashion. And that'll be 9-4. to four. Rough start here for the T-side because they don't even get a bomb plant. So you don't really want to go for a force here. So you're now you're looking at 10-4. And Heroic are pretty close now to closing out this map. Remember, though, how, how quick these comebacks feel in MR12. Yeah, look at that. All three of them just ate it blind. The fact, that, time. the fact that Dexter's in the open just buys them two seconds for that flashbang to clear. Otherwise, it could have changed the round. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, look at all those screens. They're all, <laughs> That's they're a all great right. shot. So as expected, it's the full eco for Furia. They'll go towards A, they'll try and get a bomb plant. But you're right. We've had a lot of these games that feel like, oh, the squad line is so heavily favored to one side, and these comebacks can happen in the blink of an eye. But look, I mean, if you think about these two teams as well, like, different places, we're still kind of trying to get a sense of what this heroic team is going to look like and play like with Dexter within the lineup, just because he's, he's been he's been taken away from us a couple of times yeah, he has. unceremoniously. For Fury, on the other hand, like positive signs at EWC despite not having a deep finish but just happy to see improvement and like they looks like they have a game plan that everyone's following but the question that we had coming into Cologne was like what's your map pool you got to play so much of one map at EWC now yeah. you're going to be forced to go deeper into your map pool and that's where we see if the good things have have kind of bled into the other maps and at least for Anubis the answer is no Skulls has been unable to keep up that Mirage performance. I think Furia really wanted to pick up the pace and split this B bomb site on a very early timing. They're about to be pushed out A. Yep. And that's going to work out perfectly for Shush. He sees Cello at the bottom of those stairs and just takes him out with no reply. Furia cannot trade it. And there's, there's enough counter utility to where this can get stalled out and delayed. So by the time they actually end up hitting this, you're going to have... There's two players about to be on the mid bridge right now, can drop and have a very fast flank. Kixon can push all the way around towards B main if he wants and leave Dexter to do that kind of a drop. There's so many options and so many win conditions for Heroic right now. Nurturns out of ammo, so eventually those trades do come in, but Kicksand's on that flank, it's now spotted. Fallen throws the bomb out to safety, and there's two players here for Fallen to try and deal with, and Kicksand just sprays down, Fallen gets caught, and now it's Keserato and Skulls looking to close out this two versus three. Problem is, Keserato has already taken so much damage. Oh, they're in the same spot as well, this is so awkward for both of them. Keserato's like, I have the low HP, let me move. These have been the two quietest performers for Furia in the second map. The two oh, oh, Shoes pulls his gun out just in time, and Skull's now left. And a 1v2, they didn't expect him to be in the same position, and that works out to be a blessing because Dexter's right in front of him, and Skull's will knock him down. Getting some credit from Kay Serato has got to be a very good feeling for Skull's with another big clutch and another big impact performance. Furia desperately needed that round. 
Money's still not great. They're not out of it just yet. Down by five. And they'll contend in this round with the MAC-10 on Fallen. It just had to be the fact, right, that the Keserato dies, that you just don't think they're both there. Oh, that's that's pretty awesome for Skull. That works out nicely. Very nicely. Hopefully that's enough to fire them. Oh, shush. Okay, shush. Taking right. your time. Thankfully, Dexter's got the kill, but you go down. They see, they sense the mid-push. That utility's the dead giveaway. And Shush is just very committed. Oh, Tessus. A risk to stand that. Cello will just cut right through him. With a minute and a half left on the clock when that kill comes out, Fury is more than happy to just take that kill and reconvene. If Heroic kind of shifts over to be worried about middle, nobody's home. Fury is changing the angle of attack. Heroic's going to gamble towards the B-bomb site. Everyone vacating the premises, and Fury is going to take up the positions they vacated and march right into a free plant. Yeah, they've all leaned on the wrong side. Although Fury don't feel confident yet. No, not, not yet. It's still going to be a full set piece in terms of the Molotov to clear out the position. Flashbangs out, let the MAC-10 hunt a little bit. Skull's starting to investigate the B-bomb site. Skulls is down. Now he knows. A lot of, well, at least one player inside of that B side of the map, so... They can test this. Bomb is just going down now. They actually have plenty of time to shift and rotate over. Yeah, this, this didn't come together nearly as quick as Fury would have liked, so they've got a little bit of a scrap on their hands. They're all coming in from camera. Heroic gather up. The trio charge in towards Cello, who's just trying to get involved in fights. He does damage, but Yuri will finish off the kills. It's now just Dexter, and this clutch he cannot win. Yuri stops him in his tracks. It's a 4K for Yuri, and a round push forward for Furia. It happened on Mirage, too, and it's happened one more time here. Is that just that one kill at the perfect moment that makes Heroic say, oh, we actually, we have, actually, we actually yeah. have plenty of time. And actually, I don't even, I'm not even going to criticize him for going for that 3v3. They did have plenty of time. They picked up plenty of utility. They had a couple of kits. Yeah, go test it. And, and Cello seemed like a relatively easy kill to get, and then Yuri had to step up with his double, and he does very well. It's, I mean, it's a really good job from both Cello and Yuri. Cello, the jumping uh, feels a little bit crazy, a but bit risky, but yeah, it's making sure focus is on him. It's making sure that first player is swinging to clear out his position, which allows Yuri to play off you perfectly, which is exactly what he did. There's the peak into Cello. He gets his reward with a couple of eco kills. Fallen comes in to back him up, and that'll be cleaned up. Scoreline is starting to shrink here for Heroic, and that's what you're talking about with the MR12. We, we do see these scorelines fall apart quite quickly. Yeah, leads disappear fast. Well, they can. The game can finish very quickly if Heroic pick up this gun round, though. They're back to having weapons. He's got the AWP out for Dexter. Yeah, and Fallen shows to stay away from the AWP himself. He had the money for it. He could have dropped his AK-47 over to Cello and picked that up, but he's decided to stick with the rifle instead of the sniper. Second time out for Heroic. Three straight now for Furia. Starting to build into this half, and Heroic want to put the stop to it before it gets out of control. I wonder how much Furia is going to open the playbook. We've seen them, I mean, with some of these weaker buys and just getting started in this half and the gun rounds slow and calculated far back to start looking for pushes punishing peaks the strategy they've selected here for it starts with everyone the A half of the map. And nobody's home for Heroic. They have three at B and two in middle at the moment. There's going to be a timing where Shush shifts back. They're just going to walk on this. Utility is going to come in now. This is just a win out of spawn, it feels like. This, unless there's going to be something crazy individually from Shush or Kixon. This round is furious all day long. They're just now clearing mid, going even further from the point of attack. A's just too open for the CTs to deal with. Furia into the bomb site. Shush sprinting forward, getting 
flashed as he goes, though. And Yuri from the fountain takes that first headshot. Skulls will back him up, and the only kill going the way of Heroic is Dexter's, and it seems to be one on the fallback. Keserato, he's been spotted. Tess just waits for that step back into his crosshair. Is that, is the, that the kill? Do they get lured into it again? Do they do it again, Jason? <laughs> I was like, uh, that's what it felt like when he got that, but no kits, no armor on Dexter. He's going to chill at the beach. They're yep. going to take a day off. Get a tan. He's not swimming, he's waiting. Yeah, he's in swimming. It's only up to his waist. Plus, that water doesn't look uh, all that wild. Looks like a nice chill day. It does. That's the best part about CS2. The water. The water? It's the number one thing. I think there's some issues if that's the best thing about the game. <laughs> there's, there's some problems. This is beautiful, look at it. <laughs> this is the bar we're setting. It is beautiful, though. Round 19. And now the game is only separated by two rounds. Ooh, a little 5-7. Being tossed the way of... Kicks out? Yeah, don't let this confuse you. This is still a very dangerous round. Heroic have a very good buy, even with two five sevens in the mix. It was good round, boys. It was good round. That last round was good. Something. Oh, well, you gotta have up. some nerds positivity. <laughs> yeah, that's Boom. a good point. You take the positivity when you can get it. Sixty-nine health for Fallen. Doesn't look too pretty here for Heroic. Fury have a fantastic opportunity to close this gap to just one round. Clearing out mid with the Molotov. Cello cautious. Just jiggling middle, seeing if anybody is forced forward by that utility. Yeah, they're just taking basic control here at around the one minute mark. Nothing they've done is given away where they want to end. Bomb is outside the B bomb site, but plenty of time to move it elsewhere if they'd like. Showing like they want dark control to start probing into the B bomb site. Nertz is defending here with an M4. He's been spectacular in this game so far. Tessis is here with them, so two M4s at this site that Fury is attacking into. This is exactly what Heroic want. Their best weapons for the job. They're going for a boost. This could be very potent. If Nurts is able to spot out Skulls, he'll start to spray down, and oh, Nurts, you do not see him with those often. But Skulls has given too much time to react. And it should let him know there's a second player behind this oh, smoke. Oh, they know. They absolutely know that Tessis is here, but oh, that smoke fades away, and that ball plant is canceled. Tessis gets away with a second, and that's a little bit of a fumble from Furia. They'll pick that ball back up with 10 seconds on that clock. No, but again, it might just be a bait. Look at them coming in the flank now. Shush might go for this now if you can, you, you risk the five sevens for sure if you want to go for it, and now it's on. Oh my god, five seven to a kill on Skulls, and Castorado is left to clean up the mess. He looks in towards B-Main, and there's just nothing he can do about this. Heroic pull it off, and it's Tessus. They had to know he was on the platform. He was boosting Nerds up. You get the clean entry. The smoke fades away as you're planting the bomb, and Tessus gets two out of it. And no one's got cover of it. No one's even looking oh, in that, that direction. Oh, that is a Yeah, Furia lost their focus for just a half second, and Tessus takes complete advantage. What a champion. 5-7 is way more advanced than Skulls realized. He saw the deep player, but not the close player. And that's Heroic maybe just stopping this comeback just as it felt like Fury was getting it going. Timeout taken, second one. So the Brazilians can talk things over. Yeah, they need to. There's a lot to discuss. And that game against Liquid, Yuri had an incredible individual performance. He was 2.11 rating on Anubis. Not quite at the same level here today. Keserado also up there with him. Two of them have been have been pretty quiet today. Skulls obviously on Mirage was, was the big boy. Fallen's had his moments. We haven't had to t talk too much about Keserado, which seems like a crazy thing to say. Yeah, true. He's been pretty quiet. And a lot of their victories at EWC was Kesserato, who was the obvious standout for them. Oh, he was a stud. Furia fully invested into round 20. Flashes out, kicks and peeks it. 
Fury got out of dodge before they were in harm's way. Now Cello is sent forward into the attack. Kicks and just obliterates him. Even while blinded, the headshot will connect. The in-game leader, Kicksan, is locking middle up. Furia losing two members a couple of seconds into this round. That's not what Furia wanted out of the timeout. Not at all. But they're going to give one right back. Five on three. Nerds decides to be proactive, decides to be aggressive. And that's a chance. It feels like a chance for Furia now with a gift like that. Much more manageable. And a minute on the clock to do it. Full and clearing those mid doors. No one on the other side of it. Getting closer and closer, but Kicksand's just jiggling for info. As soon as he spots even a little toe, he's going to put that smoke down. Now he's seen him. Now he knows. Fallen is charging towards him. There's still two players in defense here. One of them, Dexter from Heaven, and that op will chime in. His teammate had to be the sacrifice, but it's made up for it. With 14 seconds left, Casarado can't win this round, and we are looking at 12 for Heroic. They are about to take us to a third map in this series and stay alive for at least one map longer in Cologne. Beautiful round from Kixon. Holding on to mid. That first shot had to be something special. Oh, fully blind. He just jiggle and pulls the trigger, and it's perfect. Dexter with the final three kills with the AWP. And Heroic with four chances to close out this map. Take us to Nuke. And the whole framing of Nuke as a third map is that's the safety net for Furia. Yeah, exactly. That's what we started this map with. We knew it was maybe a little bit of a risk to go with Anubis. They maybe seen a weakness first with Heroic on this map and also felt confident with their win over Liquid. But it hasn't worked out for Fury here, but at least the silver lining is Nuke is lying away as the third. Yeah, but they're getting pressured at this B bomb site. Good nades out towards main. However, Dexter was over in dark. He's kind of been forced out of the situation. That Tech-9 was very, very dangerous. Furia pumping the brakes. Re-exec coming in. We'll attempt to get through, but the AWP is waiting for them. They have the AK and the M4 ready to rattle away. It is not looking good for Furia. In fact, it is over here on Anubis. This series goes to three. And this is for elimination. This is for survival at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. Furia and Heroic will be decided on Nuke. Yeah, so he was looking forward to that. It was going to be uh, a third map decider that's coming down to Nuke, and hopefully we get the same Fallen that we've seen uh, glimpses of over on Anubis. That AWP was unreal at times, so I'm hoping we get to see that again. So it's always nice feeling that nostalgia. I mean, one thing I think about, if you think about how good, uh, yeah, well, pistol rounds at EWC, Furia just rinse and repeat, hit this upper bomb site time and time again, and this is going to be happening in the gun rounds as well. K Serato has been super impactful coming out squeak door, finding picks oh. for Furia. And in this round, no one's needed because it's all worked perfectly. They just melt through this defense. Skulls is low. That's about the only thing the Heroic have been able to do in this pistol round. Furia just burst through the A bomb side, put that bomb down, and what a different story it is on Nuke when it comes to pistols. Success instantly for Furia. Yeah, and let, let's talk about this a little bit more, because this is what you'll probably see from Furia throughout this half on the T side. What, the things that they were very, very good on at EWC on Nuke, and we got to see him play this time and time again. Very good at finding picks, K Serato at the squeaky door, as I just mentioned. They were very good in the mid round of hitting the pause button, waiting, being patient, letting the next play come to them, letting themselves figure out where exactly they want to finish. They were very good at moving around the map, even when they were separated and finding ways to work together and apply pressure at different points of the map. Heroic, if they don't have some individual level to put a stop to some of the initial battles that are going to come out, initial fights, they're going to be in trouble. Fury is going to pick them apart. You need Nerts again to have a good game. What a difference that made for them on Anubis. CT4 spot could unravel the start for Fury if it comes together. We've seen stranger things so far in Cologne. Yeah. 
little bit of utility. Molotov into the hut, making sure Heroic is not pushed up in any way. Timing on this from Nerds could be perfect. Could be perfect. Good dink. Continues the battle. Oh, and he does end up. up winning. So does Dexter. Uh-oh, Furia. Now it's all fallen apart. Oh, it really has. And the Skulls has that AK out. His teammate Cazerato no longer with him, and he's with Fallen at least in a 2v3. Fallen picks out one, switches back to the vent, but he runs out of ammo. Fallen down, and now Skull's being pushed on two fronts. He gets dinked down to six health. He'll use that smoke, throws it out in front of the squeaky door, and picks up the bomb instead. Now Skulls has to worry about being pushed from Hut and the smoke. It's a tough one here for Skulls and low health. Then Shush comes around that he corner. Spotted that, surely. Skulls just about seen him fake planting, drawing him in, and Skulls stays composed despite losing most of his health. He's still able to pull off the 1v2. Man, he's having a series for Furia. Had a, had a, a good clutch on Anubis, had a fantastic first map on Mirage. Now in the early going, helps them avert disaster in round two. Way, way too close for Fear. Man, that's good job from Dexter. He gets that kill over his teammate's head. Great work. That's sad for Heroic, though. You know, you come so close to picking that up. Hey, ain't nobody sad. They're buying up again. Well, they're right back in it. <laughs> they're buying up P9s. Yeah, no time to be sad, Eagles baby. Let's get back into the game again. And given how close that last round was. Oh, oh. After you, Nerds goes down first. Yeah, but these are sound cues. Ladder gave it away. K Serato's gonna hear all that. Oh. They're ready for this fight in secret. I don't I'm surprised to see them being this aggressive and moving forward about it when K Serato surely called yeah, out the noise. He's definitely heard that. They're gonna try and meet them head on in battle. Flash is coming up, clears out, nurse down with a first kill. Shoes picking up the second, and it is wild to see Furia commit this heavily into the setup when they know there was more. Multiple players down that vent. Fall in one for one with Dexter. Heroic up two players. And this, once again, could be disaster for Furia. They have to try and recover it. Cancerado takes that first step. Dexter's down. An AK-47 picked up for Cancerado. And Nurt's positioning himself up on the rafters in the B-bomb site. This time, he does not have an MP9. He has an AK-47. They've got time, but they need to cut noise, Furia. I, and actually, they're still, just, they're still just bashing their head against this wall. Going to try and make it work. Staying fixated upon plan A. Yuri removing Tessas. Now comes the biggest challenge. It's Nurts up on top of the rafters with the AK. He's got that first, couldn't quite get the second. Yuri low on health. And this time there will be no clutch for Furia. They will not be saved. And that buyback from Heroic pays off. The only thing I can think of why Fury would continue with that aggression despite the fact that K Serato's calling it. I mean, one, he might not have been able to tell that it was three. I think the sound keys were given up by two, is what, what I thought I heard in the headphones. But the only thing I can think of is that Fury just assumed that this was going to be a second round save. Or, I mean, a third round, like, you know, either the full save after winning the second. Nine! Either way, right into the stack we go, and Fury has set back the Tech Nines early. Yeah, they go for a buy their own, throwing everything they've got into this. Scrappy start to this game. Outside smokes put in place. And this an upper bus right into Shush, who was not ready. Was fumbling through his nades and now it kicks and burning. I can't believe he's still alive. Finally, a bullet will connect, but fall and goes down swiftly after. And it's Yuri, the only player remaining. And they now know exactly where he's coming from. He'll switch out to that Galil. Looking up towards heaven. Gets double peek from two different positions. And that will result in Furia tying up this game. Cool idea, though, from, from Furia, throwing a little bit of trickery into it with the timings, throwing that smoke wall outside to show that they're going to cross, and then busting out of hut right at the same sure, time, yeah. right when right when the communication is coming out from Heroic that someone might need to shift, that someone might need to pay attention elsewhere. That's when they find the timing, and it was almost a big enough opening. Kixon is the hero with his double kill inside the Molotov. Cello. He's coming through that smoke. Tessas is waiting for him. Cello goes for the peak. And still, even on the second attempt, does not get through Tessas. This is a monstrous hold. That is so clean from Tessas. This, this actually, uh, you know, this couldn't have really started much worse for Furia. The pistol round in the second round are obviously nice, but the second round was sketchy. But from there, you've, you've got Heroic now flush with confidence. A couple big rounds, sure. a couple big impact plays from individuals. Tessas is going to be feeling really good after that sequence, really sharp. 
And he's loving that. And Furious still struggling to get their economy going on the T side. Yeah, just teetering on the edge of Eco and Bai. Three AK 47s, a Mac 10, and a Tech 9. We'll blow open that door. Skulls will make it uncomfortable for Kick Sam once again, who's standing in fire and just about survives. Cancerado got down the vent. Skulls, not so lucky. Nah, not so no, much. No, he made it now. He has indeed. They don't have the bomb though, so they need to join up through this ramp attack. They're going right at Tess's. He's going to drop down. He didn't like the fight. Yeah, but he wants a double dip. He's coming back up. He's got teammates coming behind the Molotov that's about to fade! Not a good position to, to think about there for the side of the T's. Tess has hung around, he got an extra, and he's still here. He's still fighting, he isn't falling all the way down into the site. Now, surely, he will. He'll take those steps back and fall down. He's not alone, though, he's got his teammate, but Dexter is about to be removed. They've got to realize that wasn't, that wasn't the ramp player. There's another one down here. Tess has called out Skulls, ready for that. Tess has cleared this time. He's so sharp today, it's incredible, actually. He's just he's just saved this round again for Furia. Two big rounds for Skulls in the early going. Now, Yuri, off angle. Surely a head will show, and he takes it. He takes it clean off. Shush and Kixen might want to save. There's not HP on Kixen to get involved in anything. Yeah, he got damaged up with that early Molotov. Actually thrown by Skulls at the start of the round. But the timing, oh, it comes back in favor of Kixan. He runs into Fallen, who puts him on his ass. And Shush now on the upper bomb site has no other option. He has to save that M4. And yeah, Skulls is saving Furia multiple times today. Even in that losing effort, he had his big moments. Yep. And it, they needed him in this round because it looked like this one got away from Furia. They looked really discombobulated when they met that much resistance over towards ramp room. When Tess is stuck around on ramp waiting for his reinforcements to arrive as the molly faded, it looked like they were really, really stuck in an impossible situation. It's only Skulls coming down secret who's able to crack things open for him. A slight glimpse into Rook just coordinating their A setup. Still able to get a good buy here, Heroic, despite losing the round. And Nurtz is looking to be disruptive outside. He can be a real threat, a real nuisance, and he's hearing those steps cross on over. They've got Cello down. Cello's got the bomb. Nurtz gets that kill on Yuri, and Cello fires back through that smoke. Oh, even Dexter Grenade. taking down Is it going to go low. far enough? Needed a little more mustard on that hot dog. Dexter over, Dexter over in lockers, peering at the smoke. Two M4s have rotated down. They've been attacked at the lower bomb site a couple times recently, so they're feeling a little bit nervous. But as you mentioned and pointed out earlier, this is the bomb. If something goes wrong and Cello loses this on this push, I don't know if Furia can recover. They might be able to try it. What? That is some clearance. That is a ridiculous clearance in Kicks and That is a vertical point to the sky. And a rip cello off the top, and now the bomb's down. They have to force Kicks and out of there. It's okay that Kixen sacrifices himself as well because there's a second player down that wasn't spotted by Cello. The real problem is Fury doesn't have any smokes to cross this. They're trying to put an improvised rum boost in play. They might run... Oh, oh that's the yeah. second time they failed it. Third time's the charm. Oh, boys. Tessas is coming now to clean up, so they're all dead. Nice it's going to be a uh, nice... <laughs> yeah, he definitely caught that one, put it in his back pocket. And Skulls is down, 35 seconds. Hmm, Furia. This is not a pretty one. This is not one you want to remember. Just that bomb being dropped. Nurts with his aggressive play. One kill was so important because that second player would have been joined up with Cello. That's that's one hell of a clearance from Kixam. Shoes comes in and Fallen's down now as well. Oh, this is brutal. Take everything away from him. Be ruthless, Shush. You gotta know. Kazerado's around that blue vent, so he's gonna use his utility. Oh, it's smart. It isn't spreading. And instead, he goes the old-fashioned way and just faces him. Had some mercy, too. Takes Kazerado down before the time runs out. Actually, no, he didn't. Or, no, he did. Sorry. We're all good. Saved. But, uh, yeah, this is Nerds being... Nice and aggressive. He can be such a threat in the cello. Got the trade, but got stuck in that position with a bomb, and that's never a nice place you like to be. Yeah, just not enough utility for Fury to join back up with him. So some issues on this T side so far. Yeah, big time. A few hiccups there. It's not as clean as you probably expected to see in the early going based off what we've seen out of their Ooh. nuke in the past. 
We're not expecting anything out of Furia in this round, really. Uh, a bomb plant would be huge. And they're going to run right into the A setup. The bomb is now down, loose on the floor. Dexter missing shots on that op, so he'll take a few steps into cover, and Shush will clean up the rest. 5-3, to three. Heroic have a two-round lead. Yeah, but Heroic's looking solid on the CT side, Nuke. They really are. And this is starting to get worrying, because as you mentioned, the context of this game is, if Fury lose, if they go out in stage one of Cologne, that's a disaster. You've had your whole roster here the whole time. You've had events where you've actually been able to take your full roster in the lead up to this event. We're only just had their Alper land yesterday, and they well, barely played anything with it. And you're looking, you're looking to have a performance here at Cologne that kind of changes the vibe around the team in terms of what's expected, in terms of what's possible, in terms of the positivity you can bring into an event. Early elimination and all that hard work around the roster changes goes to waste. Charging into the upper bomb site. Some speed behind this one from Fury up. Skulls and Cello. They've got two. Shush falling off the top. And he's got a couple of low players, but not fallen. He's running right at him with that Tech 9. And oh my god, Dexter diving down. He's alone. He's completely alone. And he would have had to have a miraculous moment, but there is none available to him. And that upper boss from Fury pays off. We just keep saying his name, too. Skulls has, has critical kill. I mean, his scoreline isn't anything impressive. Six it's and seven. Impact. But I feel like all six of those are high-impact round-winning kills. 1v2 in round two. Two-kill backstab at the lower bomb site to save Furia. And now two kills in this round to help provide the openings necessary to break in. And despite it not looking pretty, Fury is starting to put enough rounds on the board for them to be pleased and happy. Fighting tooth and nail. Well, they're going forward again. Fury charging now into the upper bomb site. This time, kicks and has had enough. Gets into that smoke next to the vent and unleashes death to two. It's Keserato and Cello forced to sit back and watch the rest of the screens beside them. And that means Fury have to go to plan B. I feel like Fallen's trying to call a game based off expectations. We saw it on Mirage, the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back B hits to close mm -hmm. out the map. The third one finally worked. Here again, we're seeing a lot of emphasis on this fast, aggressive play out the squeak door. Oh, just about sees a bit of Tessus, but commits too far in the open, and Dexter will best fall in, in that fight. And any sort of ground that Fury had in this round has completely fallen away from them now. Yuri stuck in the vending machine room. He'll walk into the lobby waiting around the corner is Shush. And it's six rounds to four. At a minimum, Heroic have confirmed themselves a tight game at the half, but with the way they're playing, we're expecting more. They could, could, could crank this up, especially if they're able to get a win here. Fury is out of money after this buy. They do have a significant losing bonus. Well, they have two rounds in the losing bonus built up. You get a plant, you save some weapons, next round can still be an investment, but things are going to be tight. It looked like uh, Fallen just shrugged off a, a timeout request from the coach Sid there. It seemed like he wanted to come in and have a say, and Fallen didn't, didn't feel like he needed it. Look, it's one of the benefits of having Fallen on the team, is all that experience as an in-game leader in tense situations. So if Fallen wants to call himself out of a problem, I think you give him that, that leeway. Kick sound starting to be really annoying for Fury to deal with. He's gone into the vent this time. CT smoke keeping that door at bay. And you're right, it feels like a stubbornness to Fallen's calling today. Another attempt to get out into the upper bomb site. It's held back, it's stalled out by utility. At least they haven't lost anybody. True. So they could go into it once the CTs are drained of utility. Shush drops on towards hot, makes plenty of noise, another that'll smoke. be called out. Yeah, another smoke just to delay things even further. Now Dexter's getting aggressive in towards the hut. How far does he want to push this? This Dexter, he pushes a little more than others. And it'll work out for him. So Furious sit back. The fight comes to them. But again, like, this round has got to be so frustrating for Furia players because you're like, we've actually just sat here doing nothing, waiting for these smokes to fade that have been replenished three times, and now we've lost a player because we're and sitting here map control. getting pushed in, and they're about to find out that because they've been sitting here behind these smokes, this flank is coming in. Kicksan started in vent, and now he's gone all the way around. He can hear them in the lobby. He knows they're in there, and his teammates are primed to deal with an upper bust, and he's going to stop it before it can even happen. They're coming out that door, that's the bomb down, Cello's dead, and this was a terrible round from Furia. This is a 7th for Heroic. And that call just did not work out at all. Wow, 
Last round of this half, and Fury are out of cash. Heroic has really warmed up into the series. Looking solid on the CT side. 7-4, to four, three round lead. It feels like Kixan is very comfortably dealing with the simplicity of this T-side calling right now. Like he, he's been starting the vent, and then he knows, okay, we're, we're not seeing anything. He's just happy to push all the way behind them. Well, plenty of opportunity and plenty of tape to look at for Furious Nuke, and we kind of touched on it in the pregame, mentioning how, or in the early stages of this map, what they'd been doing at EWC to make their nuke so dangerous. A lot of attacks out Squeak Door, a lot of attacks out Vent. This they, is, they this used to be the way Fury played years ago, too, under Art. They would never go outside on Nuke. There would be a lot of inner hits. What we haven't seen that I thought we would see was a little bit more of that kind of slow-paced rounds, emphasizing outside takes, emphasize actually attacking into the outside defenders, not always just trying to cross towards Secret, and then you kind of play a slower mid-round based off what you get from there. Fury has been aggressively getting into fights and just kind of seeing who comes out on the top. Southside Smoke's deployed. No one's playing with him. Surprise. Surprise. It is mainly focused on A. Is this the same round? Yeah, it's a little out. bit faster. This, this time it is faster and it's successful in grabbing that opening and some space into the site. There's a vent player and it's Kixan again. He looks to come in behind them through those smokes. He's in main and so is Yuri. So that Tech 9 is going to get that easy kill. Doubles up into the AK and it looks like Furious deal one extra at the end of this half. It wasn't the best T-side, but five rounds, Jason, it, it might be enough. Yeah, I mean, look, I think I think you're going to be okay with five rounds considering how this went, especially in the early going. Losing that third round was really, really painful. It took you a long time to get back up to it. You were buying a lot of Tech 9s, a lot of MAC-10s, a lot of Galils. And that head of Cello spotted, knocked off. Dexter will eventually fall. So five rounds secure right at the end for Furia. We've got one more half to decide who is going home and who is progressing to stage two here at Intel Extreme Masters Cologne.
I love this one. Last one. I will jump down. Okay, okay. Red. Red, red. One more. One more. Nice, Amy. Nice. nice. And from that point onwards, Heroic went on a bit of a roll. It was a stubborn calling, it felt like, at times in Fury, but it did net them a fifth round right at the end there. So 7-5 half with the pistol round, you can tie this game up almost instantly. And we get to see what they're capable of on the defense this time, Jason. Yeah, but all their gun round wins in the first half were, were separated, were, were punctuated, right? True. Never two in a row. Let's see if they can build some momentum on the CT side. Doors blown open. That smoke misses its mark. Big time. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of pointless now, honestly, that so. You're just going to have a little peek through that squeaky door into the back of the lobby. And they use a second smoke. That's better. Well, the first one was CT smoke. Yuri threw that incorrectly. Second yeah. one was the T side. Good duelies work from Skulls, and he's stepping into the fights and still delivering headshots for Furia. Yeah. They're stalled out. Just two players left for Heroic, and Furia hold on. They struggle with pistol rounds at times on Anubis. They Different got story here on Nuke. Yeah, well, they, they, they reversed it, right? Hero got both pistols on Anubis, now Furia's got both pistols on the deciding map, which never feels good. Smoke coming in towards doors, and Skull says, you'll never expect me. Triple kill. And Furia will start this on a positive note. Now, Heroic don't get close to a bomb plan you'd match in. Given the scoreline, they're going to go for an eco here. And that will allow the scoreline to be increased for Furia. They'll tie the game up 7-7. Seven to seven. And we'll keep singing Skull's praises throughout this. If Fury make it through today, if they make it to stage two, it is in large part by Skull's help. A new recruit to Fury up. And as expected, the eco for Heroic. Outside smoke's thrown. It's all a little bit of a ruse. Not a whole lot of strength or power behind this fake. It's unarmored Glocks. And if they want to take advantage of the fake they've thrown, they've got to come through the smoke. Now this could go very well for Cello, or it could get a little bit overwhelming. So he's going to just drop back. He won't make the decision to stay and fight them. And he's got Kesarado coming out of decon with himself. It is going to end up being an easy hole for Furia. Kesarado runs out of ammo in his primary weapon, but he pulls out a secondary. And is able to close out on that final kill. It is 7-7, tied up as expected. And now the buy returns for Heroic. Yeah, first round of AK-47s on the board, missing some flashbanks thus far. They've got smokes, they've got Molotov, HE grenades, but no flashes whatsoever for this round. Furia goal number one is just make this clean. Get your economy settled early, as early as possible. Heroic are going to be sending many members outside. Something we didn't really see all that often from Furia on their T side. Those heavy outside commitments. Here comes the smoke wall. Kicks and chucking all those out. Oh, they're going to go before spawn. it. And Yuri, he's ready, and he can't stop Nerds. Loses that jewel despite getting the bullet off first, and that's a pack of players down. Shush climbing down the vent, getting in behind the player, Keserato. He's about to be cleared, Shush goes down in the vent. Keserato does very well, and he knows they're charging down into that site. Those double doors are soon to swinging wide open. They actually take a pause here, Heroic. They're not committing into the site just yet. Oh, this is awkward for Cello and Keserato. Very, very committed in uncomfortable positions. Cello's got to watch Keserato's back, but he knows there's more in front as well. Gets into a little bit more safety. Heroic should know exactly what kind of defense is down here. Two players that they know about. They'll sit and wait and make Furious sweat. Meanwhile, Kixon is still searching around the map, looking to just cause chaos. At this point, I think Heroic's like, our best bet, shooting right back up those vents. Not enough manpower to keep eyes on it. Three players now defending lower, and poor Skulls. He's had a fantastic nuke so far, but that's too much to ask. Now for Furia. And that's that's just as designed, and that's, that's really cool from Heroic, because you, your in-game leader is the one kind of searching the map, and you, he's, like, controlling controlling your round away from the main point of attack, right? Like, the main core sure. of the team is downstairs. They're like, okay, we've been stalled out. Forcing the issue doesn't feel great. And Kixon just says, everyone wait. 
everyone chill. I'm outside. I'm walking. I'm going to rap heaven. Let me see walking what I can you. find. Yeah, it's uh, it great to see Kixan is uh, definitely one of those IGLs that has been really impressive. Ooh. Got to see him first out at the, the Paris Major with his Apex squad. And there was kind of a battle of two new IGLs at the time of Shue and Kixan. And Shue's obviously gone on to do great things to Malice. But do with this ragtag team at Heroic. We thought once Katie and left, this Heroic side wouldn't be able to put together a competitive roster. And you look at all the pieces, you wonder, how, how is this going to work? I think they've always kind of performed better than expectations. Even in a tournament like this, they, they can knock Fury out and get into stage two. I would say better than expectations early on. I yeah. think it became pretty clear pretty quickly that, that, it, that it had it, the ceiling had been reached. And I think that's, that's why we're also curious to see what this heroic team is going to look like with Dexter. Because Dexter does feel like he's got the skills and he's got the impact as a player to take you to the next level. Deep nade thrown from inside the upper bomb site. Oh, even though he's blind, Dexter still gets it. I was going to say, that nade probably letting Dexter know defense is deep, not that close. Oh. Serato gets stuck jumping back. Oh, Fury is falling apart at the worst moment. They've got no cash built up. Yeah, this is starting to get very worrying for Fury in the second half, and it's only really just started. Nurse is at heaven. Such a powerful position. Cello is going to come up this ladder, and he's going to die. He is going to go down to the hand of Nerds. And the rest of the attack, even if that ball goes down, you have to get rid of Yuri. And that's going to be Nerds' job that he will do easily. Fall and stuck in the vent. Tess says, oh, pulls a grenade. It looked like he's about to hard clear it. Regardless, he gets his gun out in time and fallen unable to stay alive much longer. This is that sinking feeling. They, the players won't have it yet. Uh, still just embroiled in the competition. But this is where you look at it and you start saying, oh, that Anubis pick. Ooh, yeah. that Anubis pick. We knew it was a risk. We're probably feeling really good about it after the game against Liquid yesterday. Much more positive than what they were able to show today. But we were talking about Nuke because the, the safety net, it doesn't look like it's caught them just yet. Now uh, we'll see. They've got one more gun round. they got one more chance to get into the swing of things. Saving a lot in this round. No one buying armor, just some upgraded pistols so that they can move forward. Full utility, M4s, kits, AWP out for Fallen. And then that defense better be absolutely perfect. Oh, Jello. Pops on up, says hello to Shush. Sends him down to the Shadow Realm. 4v4 for now, but how long are Fury going to be able to stand around like this? This fight could change it. Cello versus Tessus in secret. This is the solo fight. You can't ask for a better situation if you're Cello. Yep, and it works out for him. Takes out Tessus. He doesn't know it's the solo fight yet, which is why we're not seeing him go and grab that gun. He's focused on the fact there could be another player in behind him, but eventually Cello might be emboldened to take that rifle away. Heroic starting to make their pathway known. Wrapping towards outside, Fallen gets a glimpse and drops on into the A site. Yeah, but they've already they've already kind of lost to that rap play once to the lurk of kicks and the, just the previous round it was multiple players of heroic swarming it. Nerds was sitting up there. Can they actually stop the heaven rap this time? Fallen's looking for it, but oh, that oh, deagle it was. It's it's just going to be on a timing. It's just the problem is the deagle. It's either going to be brilliant or let you down. No, nope, doesn't connect in the first time. Goes back, goes down. This time Skulls is AK-47, starts to chime in. Grenade lands at his feet, takes half of his health away. That 5-7 from down below, it's Dexter dead. And kicks down into one versus three. He's going to walk into Skulls. He knows he's in there, clears that out first. Now gets his gun out, time is limited, going for elimination. And now you don't peek, but there's enough time if he stuck it. But he didn't. Keserato doesn't peek. He holds, and he waits, and it pays off for Keserato. Turns out pros do fake. K Serato just saying, you better plant that bomb. I ain't peeking until I hear it go down, because I'll still know exactly where you're at. Shout out to Cello. Two kills with the P250, keeping Furia at pace with Heroic just when they're about to extend that lead. Cello delivers. And a timeout immediately taken from Heroic. It's only the first that they've used. They didn't have any issues in that first half. They were living the dream. They were loving it. and Fury get a little bit more runway. 
AWP in the hands of Fallen. We've seen we've seen Fury play a double AWP on this map as well. We know Cello enjoys yeah, switching into it from like time it. to time. He did it on Mirage. For them. He was pulled out at an unpredicted time. Not ready to bust it out just now. Gonna stick on the M4. This would have been a nuts clutch from Kicksand, to be yep. fair. He does very well to get himself into this situation, and I'm sure he immediately realized he probably should have stuck the plant there, but uh, the idea, Honestly, like when that, he looks back in hindsight... Yeah, that situation, I don't even think it's even worth... Like it's, it can't even be a criticism. It, that kind of chaos, you, you tap the bomb, you think, like, you know... Serato's probably feeling a little bit of pressure, considering all the kills that have been traded. Yeah. And he's just stone cold. Fallen's got the AWP out, and he's prowling outside. Tessa's crossing with those outside smokes, makes his way to secret. Heroic about to push in towards ramp room. It's not Cello here alone. He's got his teammate in to the left side of him. It's Kesarano on that double headshot. Cello pops on up and shuts down the play forward from Heroic. So this game is going to be tied up in just a few seconds. Yeah, Furia might have regained control on that eco and Ooh, it's going to be tied up, as you said, and they're going to have economic advantage. They're going to have all the money in their favor. Cello even giving that little two-shot fake just to keep attention to the left. Activating well. Serato for a double kill. Things that don't show up on the stat sheet. Tess is trying to get underneath the possible player holding from that box. And he has actually got past Fallen's scope. Oh. He's got a kill on Fallen at least. I don't think this is... Yeah, this isn't going to be enough to turn the round. He's just going to save this time, AWP with 13 seconds backing off. His teammate's already in T-spawn as well, so not a bad thing to get away with the AWP, but those are probably going to be the only two weapons you have. I don't think Heroic's in a situation, in a position at 9-9 nine to nine on elimination map to go for a force-up around this AK and AWP. I think that would be just a touch too crazy. And I'll talk it over with a timeout. If you're heroic, the last thing you want at this point in the map is K Serato start delivering true. more and more headshots like that. I mean, it was a great time for Furia to go with that setup. They mm -hmm. got a good read on that ramp play possibility. And then Cello and K Serato obviously play it together perfectly. Another timeout. At least they have that luxury that the first half was comfortable enough that they didn't have to use any, as you mentioned. So they've got three to burn here. One left. I'm just intrigued on what they're going to go with with the buy here, Jason. They've gone for the risky decision. They've gone for the investment around the safe weapons. The Tech-9, the armor, the Deagles, the AKs, and the AWP is what Heroic have brought to this fight. They want to pick up 10 now. It feels crazy. It feels insane. But it could it, pay off. What an advantage for Furia if they can outlast this and win this round. And Heroic's going to have to do with limited utility. That's the op gone straight yep. away. You send Taster outside with limited utility, you feel like the AWP needs to make some more space, and you send the AWP out, it instantly gets picked off by Fallen. And he won't be putting himself in a position where he can fall to this red boost. You're going to have to just wait. Wait for your next chance to get this AWP into play. And those final pieces of utility, the only pieces that Heroic have, have been put in place. And Yuri's about to spot Kicksand. If he takes a step around that corner, he's going to see the head of Kicksand up on top of Red. And that's another player falling. It is collapsing for Heroic. And the risky decision to purchase and throw everything into this has not paid off. It will be 10 rounds for Furia, and it will be broke for Heroic. Especially because it didn't feel like there was any kind of significant plan on how they wanted to play it. It's like kind of, okay, Dexter, go find us a pick. Oh, you're dead? All right, well, I guess we'll we let can't do pick now. up and go <laughs> for a pick. <laughs> yeah, true. That really sort of all hinged on Dexter doing something magical and hey, a slow percentage chance that that works out for you. So now 10 to 9, Fury in the lead, Heroic in the bin. Th this might just be a, a last second pickup from Furia and the Brazilians are going to be yeah. staying alive here in Cologne. Yeah, and buy Cello something nice tonight. Buy him, buy him a little gift. Nice a little, dinner. A little dinner. Yeah, Caipirinha yeah. something. His P250 might have just won you this game. 
Three rounds in a row for Furia. Complete control oh. and fallen now. Oh. Getting fancy with it, breaking the smoke, picking a player off. Skulls, here's the footsteps. And they're going to charge down Vent. Heroic getting members down into the lower bomb site. The plant would be lovely, and that might be denied. And Cello makes his rotation down, kicks and stopped. Cello is just oh, destroying oh. him, and a little tap for extra style points. I think you, now, you, now he's earned a side and yeah. a dessert. Cello is just like, not on my watch. Not today, baby. I'm making it to stage two. 14 and 14 for him. But these these last four rounds that Furia have won, he's, he's come alive. Fallen just knowing that second smoke is coming in. Tessas had just landed up on the box. And this is just some nice shooting. Look at this little one tap, third kill. Boop. He's so good. It's just so satisfying when that happens. He's so cool under being pushed. He just, yeah, sure, one little tap. That'll well, do it. Here's the consequences of that forced buy from Heroic a couple rounds back. As Fury is just two rounds away from winning this series, from eliminating you from sucks. IEM Cologne. And yeah, once again, it's a buy with limited nades and utility. After this initial salvo, they don't have a whole lot to fall back on. Heroic sending players in behind those smokes. They're going to cross with it very quickly. They're going to get members down secret. And it's Fallen's off they're contending with. Oh, and he's been very sharp in the last few rounds. He's great at getting these openings. Tess has to go down first. Fallen, he will deploy his utility and slow down any chase that they might have wanted to deploy for Heroic. And everything is a risk now that you don't have smokes and flashes. Or you have a couple flashes. You don't have smokes to block anything off. If you're Heroic, you got to go into some of this dry contact. And you're never going to clear Yuri out. Who actually kicks in? Hold that thought. I might be wrong. Flashing in. Yuri. Oh, Ooh. no. That is not what you usually see from Yuri. And now look how nervous K Serato has to be because they know they've been they've been picked apart from the heaven wrap a number of times and that option's available to him. Fallen's going to try and get back. He can make sure nobody can go up the ladder, but he can't stop anyone from jumping up onto the roof. And Skulls and K Serato have decided not to push in towards hut and lobby. 30 seconds, that's all the time that's left for Heroic. This defense is so fragile. It could break apart with a gust of wind. The Fallen spotted down below. Kicksan gets rid of him. Her Fury down to just three players. Kesarato and Skulls doing what they can, but they're traded out. And it's just Cello. Bomb is down 13 seconds. He could still be a problem, but he's so far away. So he can't stop the plant. It'll have to be a 1v2 the old-fashioned way. And he doesn't have any utility. He does not have a kit. And it's down in front of him, so he can pick that kid up. And also, a smoke flash. So he's got all of those problems solved. Dexter's looking the wrong way. Cello, Cello, he didn't see him. He didn't see him. They don't see each other. They're right beside one another. And Dexter's able to turn. It looked like Cello, even on 4-3, would have been able to see enough of Dexter as he climbed on up there. But not to be. And Heroic needed that round win. I think if, 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 you, could, if you could pause that game or if you could chill with Fury after this when they do a VOD review, they would have said, I wish in that moment we had had K Serato and Skulls push Hut and the two players lower, Cello and Fallen, and instead of going back towards the Heaven Ladder, push towards Lobby instead. I think they would have liked to have kind of made that work so you could at least take control of that part of the map and then readdress the retake and the bomb site after the fact. Heroic not letting this one slip away. Not done yet. They've had to battle back due to that, in my opinion, crazy economic decision that forced by Last round winning it with very little utility. Well, it hasn't broken them. But every time you go down that, you go down that path and you're like, okay, Yuri in Garage, he's probably hating himself right now. Yeah, that's true. Missed kill onto Kixen. We usually see Yuri sink those kills every single time, right? We've just seen him take those every time. 11-10, one round separates Heroic and Fury as they go to battle again in round 22. This is for survival here at Cologne. Lose this map and you're heading home. They're out already. Shoes gets through that smoke. Looks up to the rafters, but Serato hits the headshot faster. The bomb has missed the vent. The bomb has missed the vent. It is down alongside Kixan. And three versus five for Heroic. It is going nowhere. Furia are going to be up to map point, series point. And for Heroic, that means elimination point here in Germany. Absolutely it does. Dexter outside, caught by Fallen, swinging with the AWP. It's just Nertz. They tried an audible down vents, and you could see some frustration on the face of Nertz. 1v5. And once again, Heroic is going to have to pull another miracle out of this. Their money is garbage. Zero on Shush, zero on Kixen. 
all they'll get is the losing bonus of $2,400. That's not enough. I think to some extent, Nerds has to just save this for such a long time. Yeah, tuck himself into a corner. Otherwise, it's Peck 9 for you, buddy. Well, he'll actually have a little bit more extra cash than anybody else, but most of these players are going to have to go with Tech 9s. Back 10s if they really want it. And you do not want to go to battle in the last round I with mean, that. I mean, Tessis will have 3750. He can drop an AK-47 right over, over to a teammate. He can actually hook someone up. I went down, I went down, Ben. Yeah. I'm dead, with the bomb. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking it. I'm not down, I'm not down. It's got to be one of those heartbreaking moments where you just fumble the vent dive. I'm not down. I'm not down. <laughs> I'm not down, guys. guys just, I'm, I'm not down. That's just so sad. <laughs> and it's like, oh, at this point of the game, at this point in the tournament, and you fumble a vent dive. That is, that is very tough to have to swallow if you're heroic. A lot of chaos going down in the mix, though, right? Yeah. Flashbang coming out. Shush is making the run. Spam coming through the smokes. Three smokes in this location, easy to lose track of yourself. Two chances for Furia, and it won't get better than this first one. Oh, Shurs sure climbing down the vent is a charge towards Cello. A charge to the Brazilian who has to hold the ramp. Tessas is dead first. Heroic down to four members, make it three. And Cello has been the bane of their existence at times on the CT side. Finally, he has dealt with by Kixan. Heroic control the vent rotation, though. Heroic control it. There's a player inside the vents. That's Shush that we saw jump down earlier. So much pressure is going to be coming from Ramp Room. Fallen just has to be patient. Just be patient and bide your time. It's the other three players who have to create the opportunity on this retake. Nurse has a Molotov as well. Heroic are fighting for their life in this post plant. They can delay this a long time. Oh, Shush is down to one health. One HP left on Shush. K stands up close. Nurse is beside him. And they are taking their time for you. They are locked out for now. And when they go for this, if they go for this now, there is limited time. And Nurse could step up here for Heroic, but he goes down and it's just the one HP of Shush. And that defuse is happening. That defuse around that corner, stopped by Shush. And he holds on with a little gun and keeps Heroic in the competition. He keeps them going. Heroic are not dead yet. How is there no one watching that? How is there nobody watching How did they not get doors? away with that? With one HP, with one health, and a Tech 9, he keeps heroic in this game. Yeah, this time you take that timeout when your coach asks for it. You all need to chill. Three players to cover the planter. They'd come from ramp room. They'd cleared everything, and all three of them are focused on decon. Not a single player looking towards double doors until it's too late. Well, we sa I said they needed a miracle. <laughs> they got that There's miracle. One. That's the miracle. Bombe, like events. Nice. Nice. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 is so confused. I'm sure heroic thought they were getting ready to go home right there. Furia, do not check the double doors. And Heroic given an absolute lifeline. Overtime is a possibility. Heroic Spy is still not good, Jason. They've still got Galils on pretty much everybody. Bar kicks out. Yeah, but you can almost throw it out the window. You're Fury. You, you lose a round like that. Everyone's nerves are on edge. You might have just sold your best chance. Look, if Heroic actually complete this and take this to overtime, they've, they've had to do it for the last five or six rounds with just a god-awful economy. They've constantly been missing flashbangs, constantly been missing smokes that they could use, that they could utilize to move around the map. They haven't had them available to them. They get all the credit in the world if they make this happen, and then obviously you go to OT and you got all the money in the world. It changes. The walk through Squeaky begins. Shush. 
Oh, he's blinded. That's a great timing on the flash. Very effective. That's Fury up with first blood. It's great timing on the smoke to throw that flash when it's about to fade. Takes hands already out. He's going to push into Cancerato. It's damage done from Cancerato, but no further kill. It skulls up in the rafters, and he's been lights out all day long for Furia. And now it is just Dexter, and he wants to stay in Germany a little longer. He just got here yesterday, and he is sprinting down to that lower bomb site, punching those digits in. And what a moment it would prove for Dexter that he deserves this spot in Heroic. If he can keep them in the competition with a clutch to bring them to overtime, but it's not to be. Furia progressed. They move to the second stage here in Cologne, <laughs> and the pocket again comes out. He's got them in it, and this is Heroic. Heartbreak here for Heroic. Dexter arrives yesterday, and unfortunately, they will not progress. They're out in stage one. Their chances will come next year in Cologne, but who knows what they'll look like then. Yeah, Heroic's going to have to have a, a tough